We're heading down to the oil fields of Mexico. And don't forget your MREs. It's time for Bad Movies Rule. Let's go. We got the machine punter mummer in the house. Yes. <laughs> the mayor is in session. He's cleared his calendar and he's here today. Welcome in Ryan Mueller. Calendar all cleared. <laughs> and again, like we're so spoiled. We got Stephanie Farrell back in the house. What's e up? Hi. Good to be back. <laughs> right. This is uh this is Tremors 2. It's finally here. Numeral deuce. That's right. De <laughs> deuce is about deuce right. Is right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we're back, man. I feel like Tremors 1 was forever ago and we've I don't know if we'll ever get through the whole series, but we tend to try and keep the same people. We better. I bought the whole series. So, <laughs> the fact is on you. <laughs> Joe is not here and Ryan is. We had to swap a couple people around schedule wise. So Ryan, thank you for stepping in for Joe. And I'm sorry you're now part of the Tremors franchise. Oh, that's fine. Welcome. <laughs> I like the first one I liked. Yeah, all right. So I was going to ask, did you watch the first one? Oh, yeah. I've seen the first one a lot. I, I'm trying. I don't know if I ever saw the second one or third one, but... The okay. first one for sure with Kevin so, Bacon. Yeah, that was on regular rotation in so my house. You're not house. coming in cold. No. no well, considering that was my punishment. Yeah. For was having uh, to watch all of yeah, them. Yeah, watching all of them. <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm that glad was, you're on board with this <laughs> and you're a part of it now. That was my that was my first podcast and he's making me watch all. What's my Why am I being punished? <laughs> Damn. Well, that's a good point. You you could have Tremors or you could have the Iron Eagle franchise. I mean, take your pick. That's fair. I don't know which is worse. <laughs> all right, well, let's just jump straight into the vitals and we can talk about the particulars of who did what on this movie before we get into our scene by scene analysis for those of you who are joining us for the first time. We're mainly a movie roasting slash reviewing podcast. We do go through the entire film. So even if you haven't seen it, like Ryan had never seen Tremors 2, you can just listen and we'll walk you through the whole thing. At the end, we'll give out awards to the people we thought did great, people we thought did terrible. And then we're going to ultimately come to a decision is, is this actually a bad movie? Is it, surprise, a good movie? Or yeah, it's trash, but it rules. It's awesome. Therefore, it's a bad movie that rules. You guys ready to go? Yeah, let's ready? do it. Let's do it. The movie was directed. This is a name that we've heard a few times on the show by S.S. Wilson. Now, S.S. Wilson, this was the first time he ever directed anything because he was formerly the writer on Tremors 1 ah. and a writer on Short Circuit 2, which is another movie we've covered together, Kurt. Yes, great movie. And so now they gave him the director's chair because the last guy was like, no more worm movies for me. I'm good. I'm out of here. <laughs> so He probably should have stuck with Ryan. <laughs> he uh, <laughs> gave it to the guy that made up the, the dirt worms, essentially. Yeah. Like, now it's your job. You have to carry this cross. The movie was written by also S.S. Wilson and Brent Maddock, his writing partner who wrote the first one. So we got the writers returning from part one and Fred Ward returning from part one along with Michael Gross. Yes. That's about it. That's about it. it. Is. Yes. <laughs> Everybody else, hard pass. There was like eight characters in this movie. Right. It was a pretty small <laughs> Literally. cast. Literally. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. IMDb has like eight people on it for this movie. The credits so. were yeah. eight people. <laughs> um, Kevin Bacon was going to come back. So he, he, he had planned to come back, but he had to film something else. They didn't want to wait, so he ultimately had to pass. Same thing with Reba McIntyre. She had this massive tour that she was on, so she couldn't come back to film. I think Kevin Bacon passed for Apollo 13. That's what it was. Thank you. I couldn't uh, remember which one. Very good decision. <laughs> yeah, I think, he, I think that worked out for Smart him pretty well. Choice. Yeah. <laughs> we, and if it doesn't make sense timing-wise, because this came out in 96 and Apollo 13 was way before that, this movie actually was supposed to come out in 1994, yeah. but there was a big fight with the studio, and so they shelved it for a couple of years. But yeah, at the time, because there's a six-year gap between the first one was 1990 and this right. one, but they tried to they tried to capitalize on Tremor's fever and get a second one out there really quick, but it just didn't work out for him. Helen Shaver joins the cast along with Chris Garten. The budget for this movie, directly affected by the fact that Kevin Bacon is not there, yes. is $4 million, was going to be close to $20 million. Then as soon as Bacon was out, they're like, uh, yeah, you don't get any money anymore. <laughs> <laughs> like any. <laughs> well, that's the, what, $16 million for Kevin Bacon, so. Right, well, they, they're not in the Fred Ward business, apparently. Like, well, look, we're not giving you a bunch of money to no. make a Fred Ward movie. Yeah. Although they should have. I love Fred they Ward. They could have. Uh, yeah, I do too. 
But when Kevin Bacon's name is on the poster, they have a little bit more belief in the project, I feel like. Well, when you got Remo Williams, Lasso and Ostriches. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. This is his third time right. on the show. Yeah. Remo Williams is back, baby. That's right. It's an ostrich farmer. The We don't have box office information because they didn't release this theatrically. It was straight to video. Oh. And the reason they didn't was because they lost Reba and Kevin. And what happened, and I'll make this brief so we can get into the movie, but they had the test screenings. Test screening scores were off the charts. In fact, the studio was shocked how much the audience liked it. Yeah. So then the producers started to fight with them saying, change your mind about straight to video. This should go theatrically now. Yeah. And they're like, no, we're not releasing a movie starring Fred Ward and Sorry. Michael Gross yeah. in theaters as right. like a big tentpole movie. And they fought for two years, and then finally they just released it on video. It's so crazy. I think this would have made at least half of what the first one made. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a, it's a decent enough sequel. Yeah. We'll get, we'll yeah, get through it. We'll yeah, get as far as sequels go, yeah. The uh, the scores right now, it's kind of borderline across the board. So it's a 5.9 on IMDb, just under 6. Higher than Air America. It barely. Barely. 50% on Rotten Tomatoes. 60% is, is fresh on there. And 46% audience score. So the critics and audience are pretty close together with the audience, even a little bit lower than the critics. So it's about but a 50-50 split across the board. Yeah. Half the critics, half the audience. Liked it or hated it. So we'll see. There's four of us here, so maybe say, two, two of, of us. us are going to really like it and two <laughs> of us are going to hate it. Well, you're going to have to figure out which is which <laughs> we'll as we see. go through this thing. <laughs> It'll be easy. It's going to be super <laughs> easy. You know what else is super easy? Joining our email list. And so if you haven't done that yet, head over to badmoviesrule.com. Sign up for our email list. We send out our newsletter every month. You get access to new information. We give you send you some new items. You're the first to know about new merch and discounts and things like that. And you can get to know our hosts a little better as well, because every month we do a spotlight on one of the 11 hosts we have on this show. 11 now? That's 11. Nice. Regulars. Yeah, that's 11. That doesn't even count Stephanie and guests that we right. have on a regular we have basis. We several so. guests, too. We have quite <laughs> quite the uh, the collection of people. Yes, the, you have the, to the, vote me in, everyone. That's the, right. <laughs> I want to be a regular. Please. We, uh, we the keep, plethora of people. A, a plethora. See, we have a plethora. A plethora. <laughs> uh, we also keep recording after the episode is over, and those bonus sections of the, like the after party, whatever you want to call it, those recordings are only available on Patreon. So if you haven't yet, you enjoy what we're doing, you can head over to patreon.com slash badmoviesruling for as little as $3 a month. Access to all kinds of bonus features. You can be involved in the show, as you'll see later. They participate in the awards section. You can vote on upcoming episodes, all kinds of stuff. And lastly, the last thing I want you to do is to email the show. If you've got suggestions, stories, questions, feedback, whatever you want to communicate with us, the best way to do it is to send us an email. This show is trash at gmail.com. Again, this show is trash at gmail.com, and we will possibly feature you on one of our upcoming mailbag episodes. Are right, you guys ready to dive into this movie? Yeah. Ready, yes. James. Anybody a big Looney Tunes fan in here? Oh, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Watching those? 100%. Kurt, okay. you? No. <laughs> <laughs> not, not Kurt. You guys not, not don't Kurt. know me well enough. Yeah. Because at the beginning of this movie, when we see the thing moving through the dirt, I just thought of Bugs Bunny. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, about? absolutely. Well, we, I think we made that joke on the first one. Right. Because I was laughing because the jackhammer went up over the mountain, back down into the ravine. It's the best. Yeah. Uh, every Bugs Bunny cartoon starts with the dirt moving, and then he just goes, I took a wrong turn. And at Albuquerque. At Albuquerque. Yeah. And yeah. I just, every time they start with this. Man, what's I'm up, like, Doc? Oh, I'd rather yeah. be watching Looney Tunes right now. <laughs> and we, right? Amen. I'm like, Bugs Bunny's going to pop out of here. And it's right. Gonna, live funny. action Looney Tunes. I mean, the music was almost similar. You I, got the sweet, was. soothing yeah. sounds of the mariachi band. Oh, it's great. <laughs> Throughout the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> All we see, that they don't give us a lot of information. Sorry, it's just this dude racking his nuts. Yeah, just nut yeah, rubbing okay. his big black pipe. <laughs> just, the opener, it, <laughs> it sounds like some really... <laughs> awkward sex is happening yeah like, before you see anything and in the like, blackout you're like yeah. what, right. what is going on well and they're then, starting off with a bold choice you just, yeah, see, that, yeah, that's you just bold. see two little like <laughs> yeah, legs dangling across the top of the street and then you're like wait street. is he hanging himself yeah. like i don't understand what's happening is, it, is he guy, on a curtain rod what <laughs> is going on <laughs> this guy did not want to be in this movie he hasn't even started yet and he's killing he's himself trying to get out <laughs> get out of the movie as soon as he can he's using his nuts to scooch across this pipe we find out because it's a tremors movie he doesn't want to get his feet on the ground yeah. and get 
get eaten by the giant dirt worm because it's sadly not Bugs Bunny, but it's instead it's a, a giant, giant dirt worm. But it's still following him. Yeah, and so he gets to the edge of it, and I'm at the before they show the barrels. I'm like, now what are you gonna do? Yeah. Uh, yep. But there's I don't know a hundred barrels. He just starts hopscotching the across them. Yeah. Yeah, just leaping. And as the, I mean, it's almost like a Jaws movie, right? As the the shark, the land <laughs> yeah. shark starts coming through the barrel, start flying left and right. And this guy's a red shirt. I mean, his purpose is to get eaten and, yeah, and sure. die. Right. Yeah. To you got the, the worm doing a drum serious. solo right through they, the, uh, <laughs> yeah. yes. they didn't waste right any through time. The beginning yeah. of the movie. No. It was like, boom, and he's dead. Okay. And he's dead. He's a goner. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. I did, what's interesting Served to me is, is, you know, the, the, the worms weren't in perfection, right? I kept saying paradise yes. last yes, time. Yes, yes. Perfection Valley. I'm proud of you, James. Thank you. I see. I you can. finally got it. Yes. He can be taught. Um, now they're all the way, like they made us run south of the border. They're all, yeah. Now they're all in Mexico down yeah. there. Correct. In the oil fields. Yes. Well, the rest of them got scared off, so they... They got tired of Tex-Mex. Right. They wanted some authentic Mexican. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's exactly it. Well, after eating Chang, they were probably still hungry. <laughs> <laughs> and they didn't like the Chinese food. No. No, no you're no. right. So they were like, give us something with some hot sauce. <laughs> This uh, and they called all their friends, which we'll we'll talk about in a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> we we spend a brief. Most of this movie takes place in Mexico. We spend a brief amount of time in perfection. We go back to perfection for a hot minute to see where's Earl. Yeah, and again the scene starts with weird sex noises, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, what is happening in this movie? What? And then it's just Earl. You're right. It, but it turns out it does have to do with sex. He's trying it does. to make He's trying to make his ostriches. That's very true. He's got these we find out Earl has, I learned my lesson. There's no bird puns coming today. <laughs> good, I'm just good. letting you know. Well the good, good news is there's, there's none only, here. There's only one scene where there's birds involved. So I'm just letting you know. You can hold your breath for the next I've two minutes. Got, I'm good. <laughs> for two minutes. I learned my lesson. He's he spent Earl has spent whatever money he got from his fifteen minutes of fame. Uh, to become an ostrich farmer. Yeah. Yeah. And he's desperately trying to breed these two ostriches. Right. Which is going to be super difficult because those are both male ostriches, <laughs> which <laughs> they don't ever. Rep- but uh, female ostriches are significantly shorter than the yeah. than the male ostriches. I didn't know that. Yeah. So he's trying to get two dudes to make a baby. That makes sense. And I'm, I won't sit there it's going, Earl. Who's going to tell Earl <laughs> this is the, <laughs> just never going to happen? And also, why, it why makes an it- ostrich farm for your choice? <laughs> After right? you have some money. Like- well, and it makes it so much more f- funnier now because of the fact that if you think about yeah. it that way, when he's yelling out the window at him, because these two won't get it done. Yeah. <laughs> There's a reason they're not interested in each other. They're man. tugboating. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And, and I do like how they set the scene where... It shows Earl did have his 15 minutes of fame. They go in the trailer, and you see he's got – there's an arcade game there called Graboid. Yes. He's got – well, they, they reference a Reebok commercial that he was in, Yep. which is hilarious to me. Like nothing sells sneakers like like two guys chasing a dirt worm through <laughs> yeah. the desert. Or Here, running these from on. it. Right. Yeah, yeah, put these on, Reeboks. <laughs> just see the yeah, Reebok run, run the dirt worm. <laughs> See the Reebok CEO just sitting Here, in the boardroom. Put he their pumps. Catching Reebok the news. Pumps just, this is where you get the important, relevant information. Yeah, he's from in the People news. Weekly, right? right? Exactly. They're like, oh my gosh, look at these guys. These dirt worms. Get them on the phone immediately. So right. <laughs> we need the license. We're gonna them. sell. We're gonna sell some sneakers. It was a tough year for Reebok. <laughs> air graboids. I see with this. I hate air graboids. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so graboid pumps just <laughs> <laughs> let's go worms. What, what I do want to see is the commercial. I want to see they the should have played the commercial. Should have played the commercial on the TV. Uh, they basically, didn't have the budget for that. He had enough money to wallpaper his refrigerator, though. Yeah. Did you like that? Okay. Uh, it was beautiful. When he walks in to his trip, does anyone think it was weird how he like leans his head? On the yes. refrigerator, and then he like opens his shirt like at the refrigerator, and he's just like hanging there, and then he grabs a beer. I'm telling you, he was hot. All he, kinds, he needed the coolness I, of the fridge. I was like, what's happening? All kinds of weird sexual tension in the beginning of this movie, just like you're saying. Well, Steph. he really feels it for his fridge. He, yeah. he really does. Did, why is <laughs> same? I like your drawers. <laughs> Hit it. That's one. Uh, so. <laughs> the reason we're here is because this taxi pulls up. That apparently, that's come all the way from Las Vegas. And there's a guy in the back that owns the oil refinery down in Mexico where these the graboids are there eating people. And so he's come to talk to Earl. Apparently, they went and looked for Val. Yeah. 
but they could. They wanted Val first, <laughs> yeah. which had just to make like, Earl feel fantastic. Uh, yeah, just like the movie yeah. also wanted Val first, <laughs> yeah. and they settled for Fred Ward. So did this guy. Right. <laughs> yeah, they just work it into the script. Yeah. <laughs> Let's have a plot point be how they'd rather have Kevin Bacon in this movie. Um, I, I just have a lot of questions about this because one, the this guy, uh, what's his name? I can't even remember the guy's name that comes up from Mexico. Who? I, I don't know. That's a yeah. great question. I oil, don't know that I ever wrote it down. Oil how baron, does, Mexican oil baron. How know. does oil man get hooked up with? The, Grady. Yes, thank you. And it's how a does huge Grady plot hole for me know where they are? Why, why is Grady even in this movie? He's like, like he's a he's a fifth level clinger. Well, he right, is, yeah, clearly because yeah. he's, he's like what you want to know about me? Like I live in a crappy apartment and I'm a taxi driver. Okay, so how are you even remotely involved? And in right. also a grifter. But Did this hey. oil baron go around to every taxi cab driver in Vegas and go, you know anything about these graboids? <laughs> Oh, yeah, I'm a huge mega have. fan. I know everything yeah, about it. Do you know this man? Knows. Just holds up a picture of Earl. I do know who that is. Can he you just, take me to him? It's yes. all so circumstantial, right? That it's he, so that the movie happens. Up, yeah. Exactly. There's no point behind any of it. No, it absolutely. seriously just happens. No reason. So, oh, <laughs> that's nice. I enjoy that. <laughs> Thank when did we get that? No that was reason. during Rubber. Oh, nice. It was during Rubber. Good one. All right, so the taxi crap. The taxi crap. <laughs> The taxi crap was driven by crappy taxi Grady driver. Hoover. Yeah, Grady. With a name like that, you suck. <laughs> oh, that Another guy. One. No, as an actor. Yeah, he for was. Sure. And how yeah. does how does how do they convince Earl? Okay, so I always every time they do a sequel to a monster movie, like with Ripley and Aliens, right? Like, how do you get Ripley to go back to where the aliens sure. are? It's always money. And I'm like, it's, it's yeah. money. Right. Yeah. Money. You know how deadly they are, but fifty grand. <laughs> Per fifty grand a I'll head. Tell you what though, I don't like being an ostrich farmer. Well, they farm, only had to so. deal with four last time. <laughs> three was it? I thought it was only three. Maybe it was four. No, it was four because when the first one died after killing itself in the oh, that's right, the trench thing. And yes, he's like, there's three more of these. There's things. three of them. You're right. So there's four. So the so the most you're gonna make is two hundred grand, and the way he spends and blows his money, it's gonna be gone in six months. Yeah. High chance, high percentage, you're gonna get eaten by a dirt worm. Yep. But what we don't know is that there's actually 4,000 of these worms down in Mexico. <laughs> a ton of them. There's At a ton least. of them. You know what? Maybe it's the ones that they found originally made their way up before the border wall was complete. <laughs> that's what it was. That's what it was. <laughs> they got, the worms got stopped by immigration. When they tried to come <laughs> Customs and Border Patrol got you them. You shall not Sorry. pass. That's, how they get, that's why they go underground. <laughs> the worms all pull up to the booths and they're just like, just, excuse me, sir. What are you, what's your business? ID they're all passport. in a van. <laughs> how many people? Are you declaring anything? <laughs> What are your, what's your business in America? I'm sorry, you're not going to be able to. It's right. just a graboid with a big push broom mustache. <laughs> is, I think this ID is fake. Carrying anything? Does the uh, stomach uh, contents of humans count? I mean, just. But my family's do I get to up there. That? <laughs> do my, can my, yeah. We've got these friends in perfection that just got right, blasted. We just, we're trying to come help right, them out. Right, we got to help them out. No, it doesn't work. So they get Grady. Okay, well, I forgot to talk about Grady's outfit. Can we talk about Grady's co oh, costume? You, yeah, oh, yeah. You, you think you trust a guy who wears two pairs of socks? <laughs> two pairs of socks. Yeah. The open bowling shirt yeah. with the wife beater, the floppy hat, but like with the rim that's too short, and the fingerless gloves. Yeah. yeah. This he is reminded me, he's like the dumbass kid from the first one, like grew up. And wanted to hunt graboids. Yes. yes. That's exactly who he reminded me of. Yes. And for a minute, I thought that's what they were like trying to do. That that kid grew up and he's like, yeah, I'm going to hunt graboids. But was, no, he's just an idiot. I was thinking this while I was watching him. Like, okay, so I've only watched two Tremors movies. And so far, they're batting a thousand percent. There's always one character that I desperately want to get eaten by a worm. Yes. In the first movie, it was the kid with the basketball, and in this movie, it was Grady. Yep. I cheered the whole movie for them to get him. I was like, there's, yes. There's someone else in this movie I wish got him. Don't <laughs> tell him. Don't tell him, Fred. Let him walk all over the ground all he wants. Right. Honestly. But yeah. He's like, he reminded me kind of like of my my son. He's three years old, and it's like, get off the ground. Stop doing that. What are you doing? He was and like it, having a toddler yeah, around. But I want to exactly play with my car. Like that. Yeah. <laughs> exactly like but, having a toddler. Yeah. It's exactly. Fred, uh, Fred Quit Ward jangling the line. chain. Like Great Ebenezer line, though. Scrooge. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and the chains because those are necessary. And, and when and when Fred, Fred Earl, Fred Ward Earl. finally yeah. decides to go, Grady just invites himself along. 
Yeah. And he's like, and I'm going to. I'm going to abandon my taxi here in perfection. <laughs> yeah. Quit my job. I'm coming with you to hunt graboids just, just in like Mexico. like TV and Iron Eagle 3, was it, right? Right. Yeah. And so I'm coming. Him. Earl's like, okay. <laughs> and I'm kind of, I know there's okay. lots of little things that bother me in this movie. I don't know what's worse. Uh, Earl calling it scissors, rock, paper. Yes. Yeah. Or the fact that Grady doesn't know what it is. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Who doesn't know what that is? Thank Grady, you. apparently. Which yeah. is worse? I don't. It's rock, paper, scissors. Everyone that's ever existed in planet Earth, call, no one calls it papers, scissors, rock. I no. call it scissors, paper, rock. <laughs> Whatever. Oh, that bugs me. Do you me really? So. No. <laughs> and the Grady, what's that? Yeah, can, what, I, what's that? Yeah. I, okay. Yeah, he's a terrible character. <laughs> he's the Which worst. Yeah, terrible. It, he's all three of the guys from Saved by the Bell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's Screech. He's Zach, and he's Slater. And he's Slater. All he's just all of them. He's got the workout gloves. <laughs> He's got the '90s, the '90s look. He's got the open bowling shirt. That, that seemed and to the, be a common theme for this movie, though. Is it's just yeah, a straight out of the '90s of all kinds of three yeah. or four different things. So. And it's a terrible, terrible person. So Zach Morris, basically. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Which I also enjoy the fact that in Mexico they're going to Petro Maya, Maya, Petro Maya. Petro Maya. Is that? What I called? just well Petro yeah. like. Gas, What's the oil. oil field? It just made me laugh. I'm like, well, that's cool. Did they name it before that, or was it named because of that? I'm such an idiot. It says the oil field in the beginning or whatever. I was like, I don't know. It looks like a regular field to me. I, <laughs> <laughs> and my wife, looks my like wife, a grass field to me. I don't know. My wife's like, what do you think an oil field looks like? Just oil everywhere? I'm like, I don't know. Well, yeah, I like, like how pools it's like of it. the biggest oil field in Mexico, and it's like one pipe. Yeah, right. Where are the drills? I thought right. it looked like there's Snake no, Mountain. Yeah, no, I always thought there was like bubbling, like blue, yes. blue, and no there's just like pools of oil everywhere. Yeah. Somewhere. All right, they get down to Mexico to this refinery, and I say they, I mean Grady and Earl. They're together. It's the two of them. They get down there, and the guy that runs it introduces them to the only three people that are in the movie with them. It's Julio, Pedro, and Kate. We'll, we'll get to in a second. But they roll up, and the first thing he does before he invo- he's like, "Hey, you guys asked us uh, to supply you with stuff, and this is the the Mexican army has supplied all this stuff." Yeah. yeah. And my first question, which actually gets asked later, is why doesn't the Mexican army supply the Mexican army? Yeah. Like that, that would probably be the most useful thing the Mexican army could give us. Probably would have been cheaper. But cheaper. And like they're just like, here's a box of dynamite and guns and all of this stuff. And there's it's just everything. Like one box. Right. <laughs> and yeah. you ask for some odd items. Right. right. Like radio t- controlled cars. Yes. RC and cars. They have so many. And tanks. So he gets, yes, he gets down there and he, and he <laughs> which we're going to get to. And they, they find they've got some guns and some dynamite and all courtesy of the Mexican army. And then out walks Kate. Okay. And and the oil baron says, this is Miss Riley. She'll be the woman in this movie. And uh, yep. she'll yeah. also be serving as the romantic the, interest. The forced yep. love interest. <laughs> yeah. And when she walks out, you think she's going to be some like badass Sigourney Weaver type. Yeah. You know, no. the way she's yeah. like walking and you think she's going to be, I mean, I know Holes came out after this, but like her character in Holes, Sigourney Weaver, like you think yeah. she's going to be like that. And then she's like, oh, hi. <laughs> No, she basically yeah, looks like, like Hi, I'm I'm your basic boring geologist. <laughs> yeah. yeah. She's dressed like a geologist ready to help create a park where they uh cage big Jurassic animals to study them. <laughs> remember how terrible the the girl was in the first movie? I can't remember her name, but the Rhonda. The, Rhonda. Rhonda. She's Rhonda two point oh and she's worse <laughs> she than Rhonda. She is. It was so bad. It's like they got together and had a meeting. We're like, how can we make her worse? Let's put a handkerchief around her neck. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Riley, we'll put a neckerchief on her. <laughs> a neckerchief. That's <laughs> gonna be so yeah, much yeah, worse. Yeah, yeah. The uh, and we'll the let suntan her, uh, lotion on the nose didn't do it. We'll we make gotta, her use some big, we need big a, words. We need to step it up. And how do we know they're gonna be romantic interests? Because within two minutes of meeting each other, they're trading ass glances. I, just, I had that down. The I sweet said, mom jeans. <laughs> There's. Well, they're both wearing mom jeans. <laughs> Honestly, if you just went into that part, you wouldn't know whose is whose. <laughs> <laughs> Even Fred Ward had mom jeans on. I know, it was bad. I was like, huh. Like, if you didn't see their faces, you'd be like, who's... Yeah, if you didn't see I it. I kind of was like, like oh. If you and I went, oh, oh it's wait a second. It's wait, Earl. I was like, oh, well, that's Earl. If you looked down at your Fruit Loops for a second and you look back up, you could, you right. could yeah. scar yourself. Yeah, right, exactly. Like, oh. Yeah, I think that's got to be the one and only direct ass shot Fred Ward ever was asked to perform in his entire career. I think so. <laughs> I mean, we don't know that. 
No, I'm just guessing. I mean, who knows what was supposed to happen in Remo Williams 2. I don't know. <laughs> but Fred, Ass glance. Why even do the shot? Fred can't even fill out his jeans. He doesn't I even know, he can't even ass. fill out Stunt mom's ass. jeans. Come on in. Bring us, have her come back around. Yeah, they just, and just, exactly. <laughs> they just cycled her back around. Like, Put the other shirt on. Here. Damn. <laughs> he is packing some heat back there. <laughs> okay. Good Lord, you're going to get some <laughs> graboids after you there, mister. <laughs> okay, Earl. Go, go <laughs> get the Kardashian mold and just <laughs> put it in the back of the pants. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And then Julio shows up, and Julio's like, I don't know, a guy that works there. And he asks the question, why not Why not take the whole army, right? And yeah. Grady gives this stupid, well, uh, yeah, but uh, they're loud. Yeah. So we can't take <laughs> the army with – who cares if they're loud? They would have – Guns and shit. Well, and he's right. like, well, you know, we, we got all these people making noise, and it's going to bring everybody here. And he's like, we just, we want to, you know, just load, be us. Just be us. And, like, and he's like, well, and so it, wait a second, you're going to be the bait? Yeah. Exactly. And apparently, because Earl's the expert, even though he just got lucky. Well, he'd be a master baiter. That's. <laughs> it, oh, jeez. God. <laughs> yeah. He would. He is the did expert. You, the lights are going to go down? off. No, before. I don't have that written down, actually. <laughs> the lights are going to go off before we even finish this episode. <laughs> this rate. Basically, it's going to be just the two of them. They've given them a box of dynamite ammunition. They've got the seismologist here, Kate, who's terrible, who's going to stay at base. And these other two guys work at the refinery. The whole oil refinery is run by two guys. And that's it. They're going to drive their truck around. Well, Julio with- sets up that. With chains. Well, and he, Julio sets up the uh, the, the size. Si- oh yeah, 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 the, yeah, the size thing the, the or Google whatever you maps. call it. So now they've got a, a TV in their front seat that yeah. shows like radar under the ground, right? To, and it comes in the shape of the worms when it comes on the seismograph. It's really <laughs> it looks like yeah. a grain of rice. It oh, it's I, like a red I, turd. I, it's coming I, at yeah, you. Yeah, I was gonna say it just looked like a piece of yeah. shit. My, <laughs> the, my three-year-old kept going, kept going. The purple worm, mommy, the purple worm. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. It's just the two of them. They got this chain with tin cans hooked on the back of their truck. Because the truck's not loud enough. Of course it is. You have to yeah. have chains hanging Especially off the back. Especially when Grady's driving it and hopping it over the like it's a freaking motocross race. <laughs> <laughs> In every scene, Grady makes as much noise as he possibly can. He's like a three-year-old. He's, He's the worst as much person. noise as they can. <laughs> He's a toddler. I was like, this movie is like... <laughs> scarring me. I already have a toddler. <laughs> it's PTSD. So the first hunt, they they drive their truck out. And what's interesting, Steph, as you've said, the truck is loud enough. A lot of the, the lore they put in the first movie kind of gets ignored. Whereas the the running around on the ground, driving the truck around, nothing ever seems to happen to the truck this time. It's just when the plot needs something to happen, it's yeah. kind of all the, the tremors rules kind of go out the window for the most part. They just seem so non-threatening this time. Way less threatening. Oh, like, yeah. I just, oh, yeah. like just way less threatening. The first kit. So they've got this remote control car. And we, I think, oh, cool. It's going to drop off this load of dynamite somewhere. Right. But no, no, they drive it right into the mouth of one. <laughs> right. Every time <laughs> they kill one of these things, they use a new remote controlled car. Yeah. I was, yeah. I'm like, where are they getting all these remote controlled cars? Because <laughs> the truck doesn't have them in there. Like the truck's kind of open. Right. Apparently they've got a hundred of these things. Yeah. And they strap on dynamite and drive them around. I love that the Mexican army is like, no, no, yeah. We'll supply you with as many radio-controlled cars and one Casio radio. That's all you get. That's that's where we draw the line. The radio gets eaten at one point because there's this whole montage. So they kill the first one because it drives right into its mouth, blows it up. Fred finally hits the stinking button after fumbling the, the whole thing. Hits it. Boom! Worm explodes. Well, didn't they do rock paper scissors to see who hit the, hit it the first time? No, too? they did that paper rock scissors. Oh, pa- oh, it was paper rock scissors. <laughs> got right. it. Okay. Get it right. <laughs> I gotta get it right. <laughs> they blow the thing up and then accuse of it's time for a montage and they show them with the umbrellas shielding themselves from the guts. Yes. And because these explosions were gross, right? The yeah. orange yeah. liquid that would fly up. Yeah, and the pumpkin and yam guts. That, yeah. exactly. That's right. Yeah. And they kill about twelve of these things, like. Three times as many as were in the last movie. Sure. In a four-minute montage. It just keeps going and going. <laughs> That's how they save money, though. It's just explosions. Explosions. Yeah. And then it, during this montage, the, the radio is on the ground, and it gets eaten. Yeah. While they're sitting there on a rock having a sandwich, you're like, you put the radio on the ground? 
I forgot. <laughs> but then they walk back to the truck. They drive away. Nothing <laughs> happens to anybody no. else. But the radio yeah, sits right. there. Radio's gone. It gets, well, if there's anything the Graboids like, yeah. it's Casio radios <laughs> and Travis Tritt. It's smooth, easy listening. <laughs> yeah, it was some Travis Tritt Soft on there, wasn't rock. it? Yeah. And they're like and chains apparently and Spanish That's right <laughs> and chains Spanish. so the rules <laughs> and Spanish the rules oh, are just super you. inconsistent uh, and as they're sitting there okay they've killed twelve of these worms mariachi. and Grady the starts mariachi. to dream of a worm based theme park that he wants to open up when he gets his money he's counting his money before it's paid out right and he's gonna he's, it's gonna be called we got worms yeah, we got <laughs> worms <laughs> yeah whatever see now you get the reference <laughs> I do uh, so. I lost my place. Sorry. Oh, so he's dreaming of a worm-based theme park, and suddenly the chain on the end of the truck gets grabbed by a graboid, and the truck starts getting pulled all around the oil field. And I'm like, all right, cool. Like something, like they're yeah. actually in some peril because at this point they haven't seemed like there's been any stakes or peril or danger or anything. Fish right? on. <laughs> and they get dragged around, but it ultimately leads to nothing. Leads to nothing. Yeah. And like the music should have been like <laughs> a Benny Hill theme. Yeah, yeah. awesome. <laughs> like, I'm like, like, and then of course the graboids have now learned that cliffs exists. Oh yeah, yeah. Because right. they can hear the cliff approaching. <laughs> that's right. And it stops, and that's where the scene should have ended. And right. then nope. It just keeps it just going. Keeps right going. turn. It's the longest. <laughs> right turn, Clyde. For no reason. <laughs> and you think, oh, maybe they, maybe this is setting up, oh, this is the daddy worm or yeah, something. No, they, like they like just, the one in the last one that had one of its you know mandibles ripped out or whatever, stumpy or whatever yeah. it was called. But no, they, it's like this is the worm that gets killed the next one. Which like, is great you, know, you brought that up because the snakes that were in the first one, the, the worms, the graboids, yeah. mm -hmm. had three snake heads on their tongue. Right. Mm -hmm. And now they have none? It's no. just the no. weird slimy... It's the... the Is it because they're, mouth, they're mouth. Mexican ones? Is they just different breed? Or, like, I don't understand... You're talking about their mouth dicks? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was just going to say it's a mouth dick. <laughs> That's what they were. They need a different tongue to speak Spanish. <laughs> they're, they're tongue dongs? Yeah, they just... <laughs> they were huffing dongs. <laughs> Oh all my right. gosh! So <laughs> this is great. All after this, eight all of a sudden on the radar. But yeah, it's like a comedy now. All of a sudden, it's yeah. pulling no, the yeah. chain. It's, it's exactly. pulling it around. It's, like it's, so, it's so playful. Yeah. Does its and it's location. A oh, cliff there. The, right the, turn. Yeah. <laughs> and then the coyote. Yes. Like, is that a coyote? Better be quiet. <laughs> like, there you go. Just like, I did chuckle at that. I know it was, it was funny. it was funny, but I was. <sighs> it's just an interesting <laughs> addition. It it was, and ultimately. It's it the tone is so like both I think Tremors was also trying to be tongue in cheek and somewhat of a comedy, where it, but at least still felt like a horror movie. Yes, it was suspenseful. Yes. There was an eeriness to it, peril. Yeah. Like the the characters are in danger. The, yeah, to never me. once in this movie that I feel they're in danger. No, until later. To, to me, I felt this had as much suspense as a Hallmark movie. <laughs> I mean, it was just like eh, right. I'm not that. I'm like not at the on the edge of my seat. Not at all. Mm -mm. At all. Oh, who's getting eaten next? Nobody they, must have been too here's expensive. Here's a perfect example. Uh, at this point... <laughs> Nobody must have been too expensive. <laughs> eight of these graboids show up on the radar, right? Oh, a moment of peril, perhaps, for our right. people. And then they're no, just driving away. They just they're drive like, away. Yeah. And, and, they, they, and the worms just stay where they are. Yeah. They're like, oh, there was somebody here just a second ago. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. <laughs> you know what they were? They were parked over the graboid conference room. That was... It they're, was a, a work meeting. They were trying to get a meeting, right? right. They, they were, were trying, trying to get, get the grab together. together. Like, right. Look, guys, if you hear these freaking remote control cars, you got to stop, stop eating them. Stop eating them. Well, they sound like like people. No, they're Dennis. They're not people. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, otherwise, I'm just going to eat them. No, don't no. eat them. Dennis, no. do not eat them. Eight people. He's have the one that blown ate the up. radio. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's, the, he's the idiot. <laughs> Dennis, do you want your dick tongue blown off or not? <laughs> don't eat it. <laughs> All right, so what do I do then? My, my other favorite part of this whole scene that makes me laugh yeah. is they eat, he eats the radio. Travis yeah. Tritt is playing. Yeah. He thought it was Travis Tritt. That's why he it's ate it. So here's my thing. It comes back later. Yeah. And and that's when he grabs the chain, right? Right. Yeah. So he, how long has been Travis Tritt been playing? <laughs> It's not an eight-minute song, <laughs> so did they replay it on the radio they station? Did. They had to have. Or, it. or was well, the graboid like, yep, the, this is great. At the I'm, meeting, you've they tuned called in, in a to, request. You've tuned yeah. in to WXLC, all Travis Tritt, all <laughs> the time. 
<laughs> you want yeah. a little TNT? Here yeah. we go. Oh, this is uh, this is Dennis the Graboid. Can you play <laughs> Trouble by <laughs> Travis Tripp? <laughs> It really gets me in the mood. There are people. There are fates worse than death. Imagine getting swallowed by a worm that had a Travis Tritt playing twenty four seven. It's this like is the it. whale in Pinocchio. You're just in there with just the radio, just playing. You're like, oh, this is really embarrassing. Please, somebody just kill me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my I wish gosh. this thing would just digest <laughs> me already. <laughs> So they just drive away from these eight graboids and nothing happens. They go they go back to the refinery and they call Bert. Okay, now Bert Gummer, the man. Yes. The yes. family the ties, legend. The family ties dad from the first Stephen one. Stephen Keaton. Love that guy. He's the one that, if you remember, had the room full of guns. We married yep. a Reba McIntyre and yep. the thing crashed through his rec room. You broke into the wrong goddamn rec room. Yep. It was awesome. Sure. Well, the, the worm head is still in his rec room. Yes. <laughs> it looks like it's coming that. through yeah, the wall that. where it came through. What his wall of like guns a, is rebuilt. A deer, a um, moose or whatever, yeah. and then yeah. a graboid head. This is Perfect. a lovely room of death. Bye-bye <laughs> <laughs> now. We find out that his wife has left him, that he plays it off when Earl calls him that, oh, she's you know visiting her sister or whatever. But he's clearly... Alone, he's munching Cheetos in his rec room, sad, right. watching a war documentary, which our guy Jack wrote in actually told me that the guy doing the voiceover in the war documentary is S.S. Wilson, the director of the movie. Oh, nice. A little Easter egg there for you. Uh, but of course, Bird is watching an old war documentary is the other thing. It's the most obvious thing you could do. It was his love. favorite war documentary. <laughs> I think World War II is my favorite war. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only thing he watches. That's right. It's on and, loop. <laughs> as soon as like Earl Like <laughs> All World War II Ken Burns documentaries all the time. <laughs> uh, no, soon, it's Travis Tripp music. As soon as Earl says graboids, he practically jumps out of his chair, right? Yeah. <laughs> Earl or er, Bert cannot get to Mexico fast enough. No, he is down. Fight. He is, let's do this. Let's, let's do it. And they call Bert. And uh, they before Bert can get down there, they're, they're in the, when I say they, I mean Kate and Earl and all of the idiots at the oil refinery are in the little conference room or whatever, and they discover this fossil out of nowhere. She's just like, oh, oh my, my gosh, God. I've got a fossil on my desk, you guys. Look at this. <laughs> What's it look Has like? Has this magnifying box and just puts it in there. Right. Oh. It just made the most important scientific discovery, and it was just in my drawer, LOL. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know how that got there. I love when she uses LOL. <laughs> Do you know what this is? This means this is a graboid fossil, and that means they're the oldest life, fo life form in the history of the world. Right. And here comes <laughs> Grady. You mean like and older than dinosaurs? <laughs> they're so like school. And I know that just by staring at it. <laughs> I haven't done any tests on it at all. No. No. Months of tests would have to discover this. No, she like found it under no, a napkin. No carbon no. dating. And then she's like, I just realized what it is. And there's just a picture of the graboid spike. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You know, it's Precambrian. Well, and even Grady's like, like, isn't it one of those spikes from the Graboids? Yeah, that's what it looks like. Grady. Good job, Scoob. <laughs> Thanks for connecting the dots. I would have never figured that out. There you he go, He unmasks Shaggy. it. He unmasks it. It's a Graboid fossil. <laughs> Bert rolls in on a giant-ass army truck. Yes. yes. Okay. And now the Mexican army has also supplied this guy with whatever he wanted. They Did he just walk just in? Like, hands He's like, hey, uh, right. <laughs> just so you know, I'm a graboid hunter. <laughs> right. right. Are you guys with Earl? Yeah, yeah, I'm with Earl. Oh, oh okay. Well, that's cool. You Would you like a tank? <laughs> Would you like? <laughs> that's what I'm thinking. Why didn't you get a tank? <laughs> <laughs> we got something special for you. Get some F-15, something. Oh, something. Do, yeah, just blaze a trail <laughs> through that oil <laughs> field, <laughs> man. Light it up. <laughs> Light up the oil. Just let it explode. Is the Mexican army just handing out weaponry to every redneck like, that comes down there? Where can I sign up? <laughs> where can I sign up? Yeah, I... Bert's uh, just like, look at me. You can trust me. <laughs> the next guy comes in after Bert. He's like, yeah, I'm a graboid yeah. hunter, too. Wor World War II is my uh, favorite war. I, a... <laughs> <laughs> I listen to TT on the daily. Can I uh, have some ammo? <laughs> I would also like... A, a truck full of guns. Yeah. Okay, sounds okay to me, man. <laughs> you want some Travis Tritt? <laughs> Seems legit. <laughs> man, here's, oh, a, man. here's a radio. <laughs> hey, man. Here's a, we're Travis handing out free Tritt. Casio radios with every bundle of nukes. <laughs> we also have a warehouse full of sweet snacks. <laughs> That's right. Would you, 
Would you like a hydrogen bomb? <laughs> I think they would have gave him a nuclear weapon if he'd asked for one. Does Mexico have nukes? I don't know. I love I that the where. army supplies them with more elephant guns. He doesn't like they actually, just got those laying around. They don't have nukes anymore in Mexico because they gave them Burt Gummer. That's what <laughs> yeah, that's right. Why. They're gone now. Right, he's got these giant elephant guns that you know shoot like crazy. He's got a 50 caliber anti-tank sniper rifle. Right. Okay. All this stuff. He comes down. He's you know it's clearly excited because this is like. Bert's fantasy, right? He's just got all this free stuff from the army. They're going to hunt some worms. It's going to be fantastic. So we get to day two of the hunt, and now Bert has gone on his own to hunt some graboids, and Earl and Grady both go off to continue being morons and hunt their own graboids separately, right? Yeah. Yes. The, the well, worms they're just split up. They only got a five day permit, right? For a hunter's <laughs> permit. So the worms just take as many as stayed they where they were. Yeah, yeah. They were just they they're leave. Just waiting. You just come back, and then they're just still they're there waiting to get killed. Siesta, worms are just like, can you just leave us alone? Man? We're not bothering anyone. <laughs> yeah. We haven't eaten anybody but these guys that are on our oil field. <laughs> yeah. Seriously, we're just sitting here trying to get Dennis to not eat the remote control <laughs> cars. <laughs> leave us alone. Knock it off, Dennis. God, Dennis. <laughs> Hate you, Dennis. <laughs> He's like the dumb brother. <laughs> he doesn't understand the difference between a <laughs> well, this was a tank this time, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. That now now Bert's got a remote control tank. He's using the Earl method. Yeah, he's got it. He's like videotaping everything. Yeah. Right. He's got except he's using four pounds of C4 yeah. <laughs> instead of dynamite strapped to this little tank he's driving around. Four but pounds of C4. Before maybe the, which they blow it might have been too much. Excessive. <laughs> <laughs> Before that, they make sure they shoehorn into the movie a five-minute conversation about MREs yeah. while they're driving. I'm like, hmm, seemed excessive at the time. But I think, <laughs> I'm like, what's the point of I think this? This again? might be a relevant hmm. plot detail. <laughs> Otherwise, why are we spending so much time talking about your rations and your food? Yes. Why you have them at all? Except it's kind of not, but it is like it. It doesn't really go anywhere, but it does. But it does. I don't. You need it later. You yeah. Do. So Graboid the radio tricks. got eaten, so you can like broadcast the pertinent information over the ra- over the radio. So that's right. <laughs> we get our first time now after they had their board meeting. Okay, the Graboids figured out now how to start plotting and tricking Earl instead of yeah. the other way around. So this Graboid actually leads them on a you know wild goose chase, so to speak, up this steep incline. Then there's like a jump scare in the movie. The Graboid's up out of the earth. Yes. Freaks out Earl, who reverses it back down this incline and wrecks his truck. Yep. Yeah, just, yeah, it gets stuck there, basically. Right. And then the worm's like, you see, Dennis, that's how you do it. Yeah. <laughs> Stop eating these remote control cars. They leave Dennis at home. I'm pretty sure that worm was just wanting to be alone in labor. <laughs> it was like, leave me alone, my God. Stop following me. <laughs> Look at these two weirdos. <laughs> What is going on? I'm trying to find a comfortable place to die. Yeah, could you just... Ah! Could you just not? That's why he was crying, because those two people were watching him. Speaking of uh, Grady being a toddler, uh, I I thought of this immediately when you said that. So uh, this worm pops up, and it kind of just sits there, and it's not really attacking or doing anything. It's outside. It's laying down on the grass, not underground. And so Fred goes back down to the truck that's now kind of almost vertical to radio back to the refinery to talk to Kate. And the whole time he's trying to radio, Grady is like that little kid when mom's on the phone. Yeah. Do you know what I'm talking about? I do. Like like slapping at him and trying to get him to tell her this. And he's just like, they're smacking each other. And he's like, shut up, get out. He's like, shut up and get off the ground. Like a child. (laughs) He is a straight up toddler. <laughs> Absolutely. He even talks like a toddler, just like kind of incoherently most of the time. Oh, he acts like one. How about when when they go back up to see why this worm is just laying there sick and not moving? He just runs over and yeah, smacks, smacks it. it. <laughs> yeah. And that worm's really like, "Are you serious? I'm in labor." <laughs> <laughs> even the way he runs back is like a little kid. He's like, <laughs> how, "I'm sorry. How did that go again? One more time." <laughs> no, I refuse. Uh, <laughs> They slap it. He he uses his remote control truck to drive it into the the <laughs> mouth of the. Once jigish, again, he just jigish. they just have a stockpile uh, of these trucks. Uh, just unlimited <laughs> supply. Of it's not doing stuff. anything. And the thing is like twitching. It's like get away from me. Yeah, <laughs> seriously. Can't you see? I'm trying to have a baby here. Yeah. Where's no, Dennis? I, and I love that he's like. Where's I think Dennis? it's got a belly. Ache. Dennis is the father. Tell him to get his ass over here. <laughs> I think it's got a belly. Ache. Good job. Good Dennis, job, Grady. How am I supposed to know how to breathe? Dennis ain't here. When Grady <laughs> walked up to slap the worm, 
for no reason. Just what is it you're trying to accomplish? Yeah. I just was like, eat him, <laughs> just, please. Just the tongue just come out and eat, grab his leg. Eat right. him. Right. Eat him now. They wouldn't. They ultimately the radio for Pedro to come out and get them with the tow truck, right? Oh, yeah, but Pedro. They end up sitting there all night on the hood of their truck. And even Bert is radio in like, just doing a little night fishing, boys. I'm up to 12 now. We're tied. 24 graboids dead. I'm like, well, Bert, why don't you come and pick them up, dude? Right. He never does. And they're waiting for Pedro, and they kind of see Pedro in the distance. Oh, here he is. Yeah, because they were going to crane the – because they thought it was alive. They were going right. to keep it to make more money. To make yes. more money, right. It was double or nothing if they kept one alive. Right. If for double, I would have left that thing. <laughs> give, give me a million for That's a right. live one, but just a hundred grand, you're just going to double it? No, I'm nope. killing it. I'll kill just it. kill two. Kill them all, all day. <laughs> I'll just Take, kill two. I'll just kill two. Take the 50. I've got all kinds of remote control cr- trucks. I'll just kill I'll, them all. I'll just kill That's them right. all. They end, up, they end up just hoofing it. They're like, well, we, there's nobody on the radar, so let's just get while the getting's good. And they hoof it over to where Pedro's truck, who what seemed like he was coming, has now stopped. And right. they get there, and they realize that Pedro is dead. Yeah, Pedro's a no-go. The whole thing is just ripped up. The yeah. engine, the hood. His hands. His are hands are just the, ha- <laughs> the rest of him's gone. Just yep. hands. His hands. I should also say, before they leave, the other graboid that's that was sick is now exploded. And yep. Earl, who is a worm scientist, is able to deduce that something has burst out of. <laughs> so what do they call that? Remember? Metamorphosis, like uh, you know, where like, a caterpillar yeah. turns into a butterfly. That's right, like That's them, right. like worm butterflies. Only I bet this whatever isn't came a butterfly. out of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I bet whatever came out of it ain't no sweet little butterfly. <laughs> <laughs> we 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 see that Bert is also vlogging. Okay, he's like, "What's up? It's your boy. Give us some likes and subscribes out there." I was like. Bert just missed YouTube. If he would have just kept going, he would have been. Right. He's vlogging in his car as he's driving around hunting. You right. Know? And uh, <laughs> uh, the sh- all right, so let's talk about the Shriekers because we're up to that point in the movie here yes. where, where worms are starting to explode and give birth to these other beings called the Shriekers. That's not how it happens for us. Aren't you? Isn't that nice? It's like, well, you're dead, <laughs> pregnant. That's it. You, Damn. Since you just had a baby, I'm sure you're really, really happy. That's just, not how it works. Yes, I was in its way indeed. right out. Just, <laughs> just work it way out through the belly button. Right. <laughs> yeah. Which they didn't really reveal that they're called shriekers anywhere. No, but I was very what, what, like I had to kind of figure out what, what was were, going. Yeah, I didn't. That's their I name. That. At one point in the movie, somebody Velocity says they were shriekers, but it's like towards the end. Yeah. I was calling them Mausers because they made me think of Ninja Turtles and Baxter Stockman's little like yes, like mechanical like they did look chomp, like chomp. Those things. Yeah, Mausers. Yeah, that's what I kept calling right, them. We'll call them first, I mean, it looked like their technical term is shriekers. Dogs, yeah. stupid little. Yeah, they go up to the radio yeah. tower. Okay, with head antennas. They they <laughs> when I say they, Earl and Grady make their way up to the radio antenna because that's their next plan. We'll get to the radio antenna. We'll radio in for help because on my radio, my truck's not working. And they get up there, and this whole time, Earl's like, don't forget, they get smarter. Yeah. Because that's what happened in the last movie. They eventually started to figure stuff out. I'm an expert. And I'm an expert. And we get the first glimpse of these freaking little Mausers, yeah. okay? which looks like a little mini Graboid, except this time they got feet. Yeah, just two. <laughs> it's Two so feet it's... and a weird tail. <laughs> it's so disappointing. They're in, like, <laughs> saggy skin. You're like, oh, this is where you start to kind of feel the suspense, you know, because like, yeah. oh, well, they're in trouble. Right. Yeah. Radio There's tower something stuff. else. They don't have, yeah, they don't have their truck. There's something else out there. And then this thing's like, <laughs> and you're like, <laughs> that's it. All right. I always, yeah. being someone that's been in rooms where movies have been put together, I always think about how they come to these decisions, right? Yeah. And you know that S.S. Wilson and whatever the other guy's name is. was. We got to make around. them be able to go in land yeah. or houses. They're sitting so around they're more at a, a table threat. and they're like, all right, man, we can't, we can't just do worms again. We can't. They're going to be expecting that. What are we going to do? And Wilson's like, all right, hear me out. Hear me out. I'm not going not to mess this up. Kangaroos. They got feet now. <laughs> they got feet now. Yeah. Ooh, I like Ooh, it. Yeah, yeah. All right, yeah. And then in the third one. How big one, are they going to be? In the third one, we'll give them arms. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a person? No, no, no. It's still a worm, but with arms and legs. <laughs> It, so a salamander? So, so a <laughs> no, I'm not, so a, a T Rex? <laughs> no, I'm not explaining this right. Uh, so <laughs> it's still gonna be a worm, right? Yeah. But then then they're gonna have a face. So wait, they still go underground? <laughs> Can they see? No. 
Can they hear? Kind of. <laughs> <laughs> but the important thing is they've got feet now. Yeah. So they're going to sound like weird dogs and pigs? Genius. Yes. <laughs> yes to all of that. What happens if they eat Pop-Tarts? <laughs> then they make a baby. They shit it right out their mouth. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Wow. Oh, this is great. This is going to be fantastic. <laughs> Hasn't that been done before? No, no, it's a totally new concept, oh, man. No, no. Totally new concept. Oh, I gotta reset. Okay. Right. <laughs> I'm That's right. That's how we make little ones. You know what I'm saying? We eat pop tarts. I'm glad we also eat don't. Pop-tarts. Shit. I'm really glad we also don't shit baby don't out of Don't feed them after midnight. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it is a little, it is a little gremlin-y, isn't it? It absolutely it is. is a little bit. Can't feed them after midnight. Don't yeah. feed them after midnight. Keep them away from water. Oh Don't get them wet. Yep. All right. So also at the same time, they're discovering the shriekers up by the radio tower. Bert is driving along, and all of a sudden his car gets stopped, and he's surprised by three shriekers. Yeah, he gets ambushed. But it cuts to black, so we don't yet know Bert's fate. You think? Yeah. Maybe Bert, if you knew there wasn't seven movies, you'd say maybe <laughs> Bert has, has met his match, right? And maybe he's a goner, and it cuts to black there. So we get back to the refinery, and to me, the funniest scene in this whole damn <laughs> yes. movie. Kate is back in the lab. Yes, thank you. I'm like really you glad. I love talking it. to my friends through their windows too. By the yes, way, that's a, right. let's let's set this up so yes. perfectly for him to be eaten. Pop through the window, and that's how you're going to have this conversation. With and he's her. just grabbing her like. <laughs> I need you. Please. Right, let's give some context. I don't know sure, what you're talking about. Sure, sure. Kate is back in the lab, <laughs> yeah. standing by a window doing laboratory stuff. Yes. When Julio just pops in and scares the crap out yeah. of her. Hey, what's going on in the lab? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know the radios are out? She's like, oh my gosh. I just poured plutonium all over my hands, you jerk. <laughs> Come into the room. Right? Yeah. Why would whole... you not go inside <laughs> You the know building. there's things killing people around. What an and insensitive it... prick. All right. So then... <laughs> Julio's death scene, I literally have on my outline, LMFAO. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yep. This I guy, have that in here a few times. This also. guy just, he just freaking sends it. Yeah. His perf- he just goes for it. Yeah, absolutely. And you know there's nothing there. Yeah. Behind, like, I know they have the one shot of it chewing on his leg. Yes. Which is like an insert, a separate shot. But right. while he's, while they're filming from inside the building and you just see him in the window, there's nothing no. there. No. It's just an actor fully going for yeah. it. And I love it. Like you said. He gets seven he feet tall. Her. He's yeah. He gets, on her. he gets so much taller for some <laughs> yeah. He's like, oh! <laughs> his facial expressions is every- great perfection yes he's like this is my one shot <laughs> <It's> my- <laughs> don't blow it now <laughs> i had like two lines in this movie this is my shot she almost pulls- right. you can see her real reaction when yeah. he grabs he rips her, her shirt because he's like trying to Oh, yeah, pulled right. back down. Down. the yeah. only real off. only real reaction she has in this whole movie. And then he finally gets pulled out of the window, and then a graboid kind of like peeks his head and like, I'll take some fries with that. <laughs> <laughs> Where's my shake? <laughs> and she's just like, screw you, Julio, and she shuts yeah. the window. <laughs> and now Julio is Tulio. <laughs> the graboid comes and in the window. And then she like she gets between some cabinets. <laughs> That's right, because graboids can't go through rock right. or files. No. She's, like, file she's like, move these bins. Or rock files. I'll be okay. safe right here. It pops in the window like you forgot my tortillas. <laughs> it seriously was like, hey, what's going on in there? That salsa? Do you have any hot sauce? <laughs> it was Dennis. That was his offspring. I, t- I told you I wanted the fire sauce. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah, it's, she also can't muster a single tear no. in this scene no. either. She makes a crying face. She goes and hides between two file cabinets. Yeah. And you think, oh, this is it. But Earl and Grady, thank God, have shown up and they're now yeah. back. They were able to get back from the car they stole by the radio tower. And they're back at the refinery. Thank goodness. Okay. She's like... But she's terrible in this movie. I love how the she's next terrible. scene is it's Earl struggling to do math for like a minute and a half. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, we, we, we killed one over there, and we we or, killed one out there. And he's killed 12, <laughs> and so that's 24. And so if each one has three babies, and there's eight left. And, and no, hold on. Don't talk to me right now. We'll <laughs> Carry the one. It just kept going. It kept going. And I'm like, don't make these hillbillies do math as one of the scenes in this movie. There's a lot. Just say there's a lot of shriekers left, okay? Yeah, there's got to be a lot. There's eight worms that hadn't been killed. They had killed 24, which means there was over 30 worms in the sticking oil field. And now there's, what, 24? 
Yes. Shriekers. Yes. Well, and I, I think it would have been great if they would have played up to that. I think it would have been funny if he was like exactly like what Ryan just said. Just like, yeah. all right, so we got eight. Uh, carry the one. And then uh, we have a lot. There's a lot yeah. of them. Yeah. Just, just, just lean into just it. Just leave into it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And at this point, Bert rolls in. They think it's another Graboid coming because the earth starts to shake, but it's the army truck. Well, and it shows it on the seismograph. Yes. Yeah. So here comes the you know the the red or the purple worm, <laughs> but it's but it's Bert's truck. It's right? Bert. Bert is alive. He's back. Yes. <laughs> Bert. Woo. Hello. Hello. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Bert Hi. is back. <laughs> Love it. And it, my my favorite line of that? the whole movie. What's that? Hit he's me. like, I feel I was denied. Important need to know information. <laughs> That's this is the best scene in the whole movie. <laughs> his his whole rant is hilarious. Yes. It's he's what he does is he comes in, he's mad that he, like he thought they knew they turned into these shriekers right. and didn't tell right. him. Right. And when he finds out they didn't know, he still ch- chews them out for not it's doing so enough awesome. reconnaissance right. yes. and intelligence to find out about this. Well, it starts the I didn't know joke. Yeah, yeah. Because they're like, oh, we didn't know. Right. We didn't know. How were we supposed to how know? The radios know? were out. He's like, we let me tell you how I got out of this. Yeah. First, I laid down some suppressing fire with automatics, and then I had to go to hand to hand combat and all this stuff. <laughs> well, and back to like Looney Tunes. Yes. Yes. He pulls his glasses off. <laughs> And, and he, he folds them nicely and just drops them in his <laughs> inner pocket. But he literally has the shape of sunglasses yeah, on, on his, his head, face. Yep. where yeah. it's just like blink, blink, blink. You know, like yes. he almost had like just it looked guts like a wily coyote dirt. explosion had yes. gone off in yes. his face. Exactly. And he described what sounds like the best scene in the movie, and they didn't show it to us. Yes, that was disappointing. He was right? knocking yeah. them off faster Definitely. than a car does chairs. He's right. emptying out yeah. his pistols. <laughs> Seriously. He got down to the point he had no ammo. He's fighting him with his hands. Yeah. He's shooting all these. I, and I was like, this sounds like the greatest scene. He pulls yeah. out two handguns that he's like, and I ran right. out of ammo. You did three and scenes I about never, rock, paper, scissors, yeah, but you don't do either. this. Never happened to me before. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> that's what he said. Apparently, they shot the scene. The scene was shot. Oh. They didn't release it because they didn't feel like the CGI was up to snuff. Oh. When it was, they were trying to put And that top. has stopped others? Never. <laughs> they put the. They put, I mean, you all saw the end no of CGI the at all in the beginning of the movie. <laughs> it was just explosions from the dirt well, and pumpkin guts thrown on right. Earl and Grady. That's well, how they got away with the fact they didn't have the the big budget, and they basically reused one of the worms from the first movie, and then just did a bunch of ground explosions. Like, oh, that was a worm. Yeah, right. and that was it. CGI wasn't up to snuff. That didn't stop them in Escape from L.A. What they still use some of the shots of the Shriekers were CGI, right? And there were times where I'm like, "Oh, that looks passable for '96," and there are times where it looked horrible. Yeah, Yeah. but just put it in the movie. Put it in. It's the best scene of the whole movie, right? And you just left it on the cutting room floor. All we want to see is Bert kick ass. That's right. He really doesn't in this. movie. I want to see him emptying his clips. Yeah, not really. He doesn't really do. No, much. much. Oh, it all happens off camera. Punching him in the face, Will Smith in Independence Day style. Yes. Just, yeah. <laughs> Welcome to Earth. Like in the first one when Kevin <sighs> Bacon like right hooks them. Right. <laughs> it makes me sad that this mummer didn't get to see Gummer. No, oh, that's, yeah. Gummer, Gunner, Mummer, Plumber. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a bummer. <laughs> he did capture one shrieker. So we, we, we find oh, out. Oh, yeah, he ties one up. He yeah, he, a, he did catch one. Thousand pound rated rope. How did he get it up there? <laughs> that's so great. It took three guys to get it down. I don't know. He's, He's just Bert a Gummer. Just, I got Bert, it up there. Bert effing Gummer. That's right. right. <laughs> he just it hoisted it. <laughs> He gets Bert or he he Bert gets there. the thing out of there. They end up putting this shrieker in a cage and, and <laughs> feeding it. Kate the scientist has more science information for us. Just like Rhonda. Rhonda two point oh she goes, Hermaphrodites. <laughs> and we're like <laughs> after uh, they feed it. Awesome. Well, we also learn that they see infrared. We, yes. That's true. So I yeah. did like that scene though, because he has like just the broom, tapping the broom. And he's like tapping the broom yeah. and then he puts his hand up and the thing's like <laughs> He's like, I knew it. <laughs> Which it makes the same Jurassic Park noise yeah. when the fins come out of yeah. the. Yep. the yeah. tss, yep. it, it does the little radar thing up up on top. They feed him one of Bert's <laughs> in the cage. They feed him one of Bert's MRE rations, and immediately it vomits a baby into the cage with it. And 
and Kate just screams the word hermaphrodite. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, they got they got peens and veins. Is that what we're trying to say? <laughs> they reproduce but, without having sex. But that's those are called asexual. Yes, yes. and I literally wrote that down. I said they produce asexually? Question mark. It doesn't mean, like it's not hermaphrodites. <laughs> and they got both bits, <laughs> and that's how they make babies. <laughs> peens <laughs> and veins. <laughs> Uh, Do you know what I'm saying? Oh, I've never heard. Yeah, that. I am. Uh, you never heard. You never one. heard. No. <laughs> peens and, you never heard peens and veins. No, I oh. I used the wiener <laughs> that I was allowed to use as a kid and the JJ's. All right. Well, point is, is Kate doesn't know anything. She's terrible about anything. No, no. 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 Some scientist. Probably because she used to be in porn. <laughs> <laughs> We find out later she did. We find out later she was hanging on uh, Earl's wall. We didn't know. (laughs) So after they realize all you need is food to make them multiply, she's like, where's all your food? Uh (laughs) Uh-oh. They had a stowaway under the truck. That's when Porky Pig comes out. He's like, bleep, bleep, bleep. That's all, folks. So (laughs) you just hear them eating, and they're multiplying like gremlins in the the other room. Literally like gremlins. And they apparently grow exponentially (laughs) fast. Immediately. They're like in the writing room. How are we going to make these things multiply? That's right. Sex? No, that's that's been done. (laughs) So they hightail it out of there, the four of them, and they run into this building that only has one wall yeah. because Grady thought it was a regular building. Yeah. They run through the door. They get It's like a facade. There's three unbuilt walls. Right. It's like, I thought it was a building. It when looks like telling a his You should have listened asset. to me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but what the building did have was a lot of doors, thankfully, yes. because it was a door storage facility. that's what you need in an facility. incomplete building. That's what they were building. <laughs> We need a place to store all these doors. Let's That's fill fine. the warehouse. We don't have any walls. But you we know got what? We don't need walls for that. We can just lean them up against this yeah. one. Yeah. We'll build one wall, and, and we got a place to put our doors. Yeah, and so what they use Perfect. the doors for is to hide from. So basically, they realize after they run into the one building or one wall building that the thing stopped chasing them as soon as they got behind the wall because they lost sight of them. They yeah. couldn't see the, the heat signatures anymore. Yeah, they can see the heat through a car. Right. But not a, to the engine, but not through a door. Not no, drywall. Not no. 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 Mm-mm. Or a door. Or a door. But the engine's giving off heat. I mean, it's heating the metal around it. So I, I don't know. To it's be fair. plausible. To they, be fair. To be fair. <laughs> to test this theory, Grady and Earl together scooch out from behind the wall behind a door. They're like carrying a door around, like do do do. As much as I love you, yeah. and you and I have been close friends, okay. there is no way I am nut hugging you <laughs> to save my life. <laughs> Behind a door, I am not going to. I am not going to scooch my body so close to yours. I think you would. I no. I think let if, those uh, Mausers eat me. I think if your life depended on it, and there were these, l- you little, really think so? Little blind asshole mice. <laughs> these naked mole rats coming after you. That you you would absolutely these kangaroos without arms spoon yeah. me behind a door as we. Like shuffled across the entire field to get to a car. That's what they're doing. They're trying to, and then the next two come out behind another door, and that's there's two doors and four people, kind yeah. of just do do doing across the left, right, left. Oh, they can't see. You it. just hear Grady yell out, "It moved! It moved!" <laughs> You're literally... Are we talking about the graboid? <laughs> well, I mean, if you want to call it a graboid, you can go ahead. But... They're literally playing like Joe, like, you can't see me behind this door. They, they should have been playing like some ice cream truck is there music. Another car? I feel like this scene was just a way to waste time. Yeah, pretty much. Is there another right. is there another car? Well, that's yeah, what they're yeah, trying to get the to the car. Yeah. But they so they get or they clear a building, they drop the doors, and they do see that there's one more shrieker kind of between them and the car. And so <laughs> Kate goes off the wall, like, oh my god! Because <laughs> we haven't already seen 30 of them. loses her yeah. mind. Good thing they're deaf. Like, the whole Worms thing was sound, and these things can't hear a damn thing. They can't yeah, okay. hear, Well, can't they felt see, vibration, can't... isn't that what the whole... I, yeah. I don't know. I thought that's what the first thing was, is the Worms could feel vibration. But, but the, voices the and, shaking. and things, too, yeah, right? I guess you're right. And so... Bert, while he was carrying the door, also was carrying his giant 50 cal anti-tank sniper rifle. Yes. And so he lays this... You know, he's got the tripod on the front of it, and his shoulders gets it all set one up. Shot, puts his ear, his ear plugs in. Yeah, he's like, "How about how far do you think that like, it's about a hundred yards?" And I, I have to say, because Matt Mulholland, one of our patrons uh, who was here with us for the Kung Fury episode, wrote in uh, f- veteran, 
He said, I had to laugh at his uh, Fred Ward's line, 100 yards is a hell of a shot. Uh, 50 caliber sniper rifles are accurate at ranges of at least 1,000 yards, and in the hands of a trained marksman, nearly 2,000 yards. That said, the effective range of a 50 caliber for qualified snipers is somewhere between one and a half to two miles. Yep. The bullet itself can go four miles or wow. further. Mm -hmm. So a hundred yard shot is like throwing a rock and hoping it hits the ground. <laughs> <laughs> That's basically what Ryan said when we were watching. Is that okay? Is that, yeah. He's like, um, a hundred yards is not not far. And I'm not <laughs> He's a, like, I'm those, not those like will an, go up to a thousand, two thousand yards. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not an army guy or anything, but I'm no. like a hundred yards. That's nothing for a sniper rifle like that. No, and he shoots this thing into four pieces with one <laughs> yeah. shot. Yeah. It just disintegrates this yep. Bowser. And everyone's like, oh, my God. Oh, gosh, great shot. 100 yards. Oh, my gosh, Bert. Shoots and Bert's that. like, oh, stop, stop. And I'm getting hot. Yeah. Um, <laughs> they, they, they're going to see me. Oh, oh, my, oh, my shirt a little oh, my exposed shirt. my chest hair. <laughs> the heat. We're supposed to keep the heat down. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, he ends up shooting through nine all, barrels. All of a sudden, the steam yeah. coming up from his undercarriage is going to draw all these Mausers <laughs> uh, <laughs> around. Something done bounced up into my undercarriage. We find out that the bullet went through about 14 different objects yes. and yes. into the engine block of the car <laughs> yep. they were trying to get to. And again, he goes, how was I nice supposed to know? I didn't know. I didn't know. <laughs> Who how parked the I car back I love here? that shot, though, following the, <laughs> the bullet, the bullet hole. Yeah. Yes. Like, to the car. It was I, a good comedic moment. I, it was. I did enjoy that. It was, that's unintentional on Bert's part, but hilarious for sure. And well, and I love that they all just look down and look under just to make sure. And there's, like, liquid <laughs> yeah, draining from the car. Everything's draining. And they, the they look. Everyone just looks right at him. He's like, <laughs> what? <laughs> He's like, I just I saved have us. How could like, I have known? I, I couldn't yeah. have. And at this point, the attention of the Mausers have now been drawn to them, and so they have to scatter into three different directions. Okay, again so, on the roofs, like the old one. Yeah. So the original. Uh, yeah. Grady yeah. runs up on top of some tanks. Yep. Right. Uh, Bert and Kate run into the the bar or whatever that place is. It's like a, a snack Earl, shack Earl or something. Earl and something. Yeah, yeah. Earl, Earl, yeah, what did Earl, I say, Bert? Yeah. Yeah. I meant Earl and Kate. And then Bert jumps into the bucket, the bucket of a of a bulldozer, basically. Yeah. Or a, one of those... Skid steer. Skid steer. Yeah. Thank you. And he's pretty low to the ground. Like, if these things weren't a foot and a half tall, yeah, they would have like, been screwed. Yeah, it, it was, was like six pallets. pallets. Yeah, uh, it was like six pallets up. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> because the hydraulics probably leak, and it just, shh, we got to put on pallets. <laughs> and the things know he's in there, and so they got their mouth dicks, like, in the <laughs> bucket. <laughs> Feeling it right? around. And they're just like, ah, it was so gr It was the grossest thing in it the was. movie. It was. Yeah. <laughs> right? Out of every, every time you can flop over and go, hey, where are you? <laughs> Little where Viagra you? would take care of that. <laughs> I want to taste some Burt Gummer. <laughs> oh, they should, have, they should have just used those doors and walked back to America. That's like that's what they should have done. <laughs> it would have worked, right? Yeah. They just strap just, it on their backs right. and just walk in a straight line right. back to the United States. It would have been fine. Good to go. Yeah, would, to go. Would you would you spoon him all the way back to America? <laughs> no, I wouldn't make it. <laughs> oh man, be too hot for you. you imagine <laughs> trying to get over the border with a door tied to your back. What Bows are you guys doing? Bowser's for miles would be alerted. <laughs> Bowser's for miles. <laughs> yeah. Miles all right. So it. Earl tricks the Shriekers to, so he can join Grady on top of the tank. So he basically. Puts a suit into like hot water. Yeah, yeah, like the hottest water I've ever seen in my yeah. life. I mean, it is steaming. Yes, and he's. Ah, ah, I can't touch these jeans. And then Grady's like, hot. "Earl, you're a genius." Yeah, right. Wheels it yep. out on a clothesline. All of them go for it, so that he can just run up and be stuck somewhere else. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So now they're stuck. The three of them. Uh, Bert is still in the bucket of the skid steer, <laughs> picking his nails with <laughs> yeah. a knife. This with a knife. Yeah. Because they don't know that he's there. Uh, and then they chose that moment to have the romantic scene. Yeah. Right? This is you always up do on, top on the of the roof. <laughs> <laughs> There's like monsters rooting around in the background. And he's like, so, you know, I've always kind of liked you. <laughs> Little velociraptor. You, know, you remind just, me been, of somebody. I've been really thinking about Dayton lately. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it was. Yeah. <laughs> have you been thinking about Dayton? I've been thinking about Dayton lately. How about Specifically you? Specifically you. All these... All these <laughs> Oral births of monsters has really got me thinking about <laughs> all these dick tongues really make me want some veen. <laughs> the P 
peen's been making me want the veen. She's I don't know like, about you, but are you a little turned on? <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm like, all we needed was the saxophone at that point. We were just missing well, they the got saxophone. Well, they got the like Mexican like they time do. music that <laughs> comes into play. Uh. She sits up. She's like, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> They could that's, have. That's She's like, you know, that's her trailer introduction too. That's the that's what they oh, show was it? in the trailer. Oh, I didn't her. see the trailer. She like sits up like. Yeah, I when he when she goes, I don't know. Where she's like, yeah, you know, um, tangentially because there's nothing to do with what you're talking about. But I just used to be a model um, <laughs> when I was younger. That's how I made my living. And I put uh, myself through college. I was even a playmate. And he was like, what? <laughs> He's like, what? October of, <laughs> of 74? And then she does the pose. Yeah. Yes, that is... Oh. <laughs> And oh he's my like, God, that is the cringiest. Yeah, moment. he's like, and he's like, oh. <laughs> he turned into Yoda. He's like, oh, oh, mm. he's like, are we about to bang on this oil tank? <laughs> Grady, get down there, just drop kicks, Grady, Spartan style, just down into the pits. <laughs> Good, this is Sparta. <laughs> oh my gosh! So, oh. but, but <laughs> what happens is the the. The Mausers start to stack on top of each they other. They start building yeah. a cheerleader pyramid. <laughs> <laughs> like a little monster palm squad, right? Yeah. Just stacking. They had the palms because they don't have hands. They had palms on the ground. Just <laughs> And those effects, those special effects right. on oh, point. This scene can keep it, can stay in, but right. Bert's scene's right. got to get cut. Yeah. No kidding. This Terrible. is the likeliest of scenarios that would happen is they film a ch- they form a cheerleader pyramid right. to get up to, well, to get up to the, I told you they get smarter to somebody that we they supposedly don't know is there and can't see. They're right. also jumping higher. They could have eaten Bert by this point. Right. Right. Oh, I mean, yeah, good they could have jumped right into the bucket and been like num 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 num. <laughs> right. And they didn't. They didn't. No. What ha- what happens is Bert jumps out of the of the scooper um, and uh, makes all of them chase him into the garage where he then runs out the other side and locks the door then runs back to the garage door shuts that shuts door that. and now like he's like, he's like cue the applause you know and <laughs> everyone's like you're a genius bird I can't and, believe and Grady's like oh, ho, ho, yeah <laughs> <laughs> That's even the face that he made. This is the high five. Like, exactly. He goes the high five Earl. He's like, yeah. he's like, yeah. <laughs> Earl's like, don't, no. No. no and no. they start to celebrate until they realize that it's full of delicious Well, yeah, snacks. they start yeah. shrieking. Sweet treats. And then the they, warehouse it's all in Spanish. Treats. That's right. It's all in Spanish. Yeah, and they're trying to figure it out. And Bert. And so they're uh, trying to. They're Grady to, got their little books. Oh, that's right. And yeah, they're like, they got their oh, no. What does Dolce mean? Flour. <laughs> yeah. yeah, flour rice or yeah. Rice, yeah. Flour. Yeah, rice flour. That was it. Yeah, they. <laughs> I like to just eat that for a snack. <laughs> <laughs> These things handful do. Handfuls of crapping right. out babies left and right from this stuff. And uh, meanwhile, they're, they're trying to scramble. Like, what do we do? What do we do? Meanwhile, they're in there. Popping like little popcorn kernels yep. in the just, in the garage, just, just freaking multiplying. spitting out just babies, spitting out. shriekers, just. And finally, Earl goes, "Spray me with this. <laughs> this is the plan. It's gonna cool me down after this fire hot paper, rooftop talk. <laughs> Rock rips through paper. I win. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> his plan is to be sprayed with a fire extinguisher to reduce or mask his body heat because yep. he'll be frozen solid. And he'll be able to walk in there because the truck with all of Bert's bombs and stuff is still in there. And we'll come out. I'll bring the bombs out. Then we'll blow the place up. That's his plan. And Grady is like, no, no, let me go. And he's like, no. And I'm like, no, let him go. Yes, Earl. please let Earl, him go. Earl, you, you let him go. <laughs> Earl, <laughs> let him go first. And then you go in. <laughs> I'm sorry, but in that scenario, I would not trust Grady to do that. Well, no, he would get killed. I think that's what, what the mayor yeah. is saying. Like, let him go in and then you go in. Because he won't make it to the no. truck. Yeah. Right? Not. I just got to outrun you. That's right. That's, That's what he said, yeah. I and, just uh, got to outrun you. But whatever, he goes, he he says paper, rock shreds through paper yeah. and yeah. lies about, because again, Grady's a moron who doesn't know rock, paper, scissors. Yeah. And he goes in there frozen solid, all of his clothes. You've got his face. He looked like such an idiot. He's got his yeah. face all wrapped up. Like he just came off Because you can't hoff. see the heat He's... of his face through the shirt. Exactly. No. no. And he goes in, and they're obviously everywhere, and he's just got to walk to the truck. And he takes forever. forever. Thank you. 
Or just yes. like earlier when she's shutting the garage door. Right. You guys notice how long it took her to shut the garage door? Of right. The, with the right. chain. You with just keep chain. hearing the chain. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, was like, it was like four minutes. You could have started like... recording a little bit sooner. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Yeah, so he goes in there. He takes forever. Eventually, he starts to melt. Yeah. Like, yep. just get to the truck and get the bomb. He starts to panic. So instead of bringing the bombs out, he just sets a timer on the C4 for like two and a half minutes yep. and just chucks it in with the other bombs, which he has thousands of pounds of things in his truck in there. Yeah. And tries to climb the lamp cord. <laughs> it, just starts, <laughs> it just starts unbuckling. Boom, he hits the wall. He. Meanwhile, uh, yeah. Grady's like, I need something. I need a, a rope or something. something. There's a hose over there. And right. then they start doing that whole ordeal. That's right. They Three people to try and get a hose. Save him by lowering the fire hose through the window, thank God, because the light thing did not work. No. <laughs> yeah, he wasn't Indiana Jones. <laughs> They're able to get him up and out of the, of the garage. Yeah. And this is when he starts running. He's like... Run. What do you mean run? Where are the bombs? You're supposed to get the bombs. He's like, no, no, I panicked. I threw them in there. <laughs> Bert's like, Bert's what like, do you mean? <laughs> what? <laughs> Bert just starts taking off and they're all like, all right. <laughs> it's going to be big. Yeah. And they stop. They get behind the building. He's like, no, no, keep going. <laughs> keep going. Yeah. You guys saw Bert's running like he has a stick up his ass. <laughs> <laughs> He does. It's going to be big. And finally, they get, he's like, all right, get down in this ditch and get down and stay down. And everybody, your but ears. Grady oh, does. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. Grady, don't get down. Don't listen to him. He yeah. doesn't know what he's Please, talking Grady, about. Stand. I literally, I li stay there, Grady. <laughs> stay there, Grady. I literally have in my notes right here, it just says, stupid Grady. That's all it says. <laughs> Because they're all For down in this moment. ditch, and Grady's standing well, at the, the top of the was the only one that had a house land on him, too, and I was like, <laughs> <Yeah>. yes, <laughs> finally, somebody died of the main character. Earl's oh, like, you okay, man? Yes. You okay? Oh, man. But I'm then so it, cuts, sad. it cuts to the most obvious tiny model of a building of all. <laughs> the grass looks gigantic <laughs> next to it. I'm like, what is this, a garage for ants? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, <laughs> that, if they had shown the real explosion, that's what it would have been. <laughs> but because it was zoomed in, boom, they had the sound effects, and all of a sudden, this garage basically yeah. hits Grady oh, in the face. Yeah, all of it. <laughs> like, yes, kill him, but he survived. No, so he's made luck. it through the entire movie. Damn. Yeah. Nobody got killed other than yeah, the guys Pedro the and Pedro Julio. And That's Julio. right. That's, That's it. it. Yeah. Man. What and, the hell, Tremors 2? And, and whatever happened to the tycoon? <laughs> Wait, the oil tycoon guy. He dipped. He was, he was like, gone. I'm out. He's like, peace out, bitches. I'm gone. You're on your own. <laughs> Finally, they get out of the crevice, and they they realize there is a gigantic crater yeah. in yep. the earth. That shot was hilarious. Yeah, yeah. Was Later on, there was a circus tent put around it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Bring it back. Yeah. It's the amusement park that Grady wanted to build. <laughs> That's, and then the movie ends as they talk about how they're going to spend their money, right? Now it's time for our amusement park. Come on, man. This is going to be great. And they walk towards the giant crater. Little they know that the oil tycoon hightailed it out of there. That's he's right. The yeah. tycoon, yeah, like, he's gone. Yeah, I'm not paying you anything. I'm out. It fades to black, and that is the end of yeah. Tremors 2. Oh. I didn't <laughs> I didn't like realize that that was the end when it was happening. <laughs> no. I thought... It, there was going to be more because they just didn't. Yeah, it was like, stop, credits. I was like, oh, okay, it's over. Yeah. I wasn't sad about it, but. <laughs> You're like, okay. <laughs> yeah, look. Um... <laughs> so. So, Tremors 2, you guys. It was I a think thing. It was a thing. I think, I, I've been trying to decide, honestly, because one of our guys that. Is a patron and, and listens to the show. His name, uh, uh, I can't think of his name. I don't want to get this wrong. Oh, I don't have my phone. I'm not going to name him out then. Let me go back. All right. I don't, I don't, I've been trying to make up my mind about what to do with the Tremors franchise because yeah. I know we generally, when we start a series of movies, we go through all of them. We're about to finish American Ninja soon. We have Iron Eagle, we have that an Iron Eagle left. To do. Yep. We're walking through. Um, I've been told by multiple listeners that it is not worth it to go through all of these. I can tell you. Okay. I've seen all of them. You Now, I know when we were joking around about you being in pun jail. Yeah, nobody informed me that was a joke, but sure, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> Let's go ahead and just put that out there. We had said, for your penance, you got to watch the entire Tremors 
series franchise right franchise and his, and his boyfriend school still it's on and okay. you did watch it i did not boyfriend school i I burned that again. <laughs> came in the mail after I found out you were joking, and I he said, microwaved it. I burned, burned it. that one. I've burned two copies of that movie now. All right, I'm so out forty bucks. <laughs> someone that has seen yes. all seven, yes. Should we do all seven? No. Oh, not even worth doing. No, that I will was, say that was a fast response. Here's what I will tell you: I no enjoy. Fun. So one is good. Nothing touches one. Yeah. Two is okay. But it's necessary for three. Three in the first 15 minutes is better than all of two. Wow. Yeah. Four, five, and six can go huff a dong. <laughs> a tongue dong? Yeah. A tongue dong. <laughs> Seven is better than two, but oh. not as good as one. So to you, we should do one, two, three, seven, but then... Yeah. Well, seven we just, gets fun. Are we just skipping ones we don't like? Then that is that fair to do? Like yes. We're only going to do as the, far as movies go. What if we did them? Do you think we could do um, four, five, four, five, and six, six together? Like one episode. Yeah, I think that would be fair if you want to do it that way. That's a that's a lot of movies to watch for one episode. Eh, I'm sure we could. Hi- we, All right, <laughs> I'm not. I'm not opposed to doing. We that. could go. Th- we could go through it quickly. We've done that in other episodes. I'm not opposed to like doing thirty that. minutes yeah. of movie. We'll see. Yeah. More to come. Stay tuned on what the ultimate decision is going to be there on Tremors. But uh, I think, you know, seven is a lot of movies. We'll see if we're going to go through all of them. But for now, what we're going to do is what we always do, which is to give this movie, Tremors 2, some awards. Yes. yes. Awards that it <laughs> deserves and uh, one that I am happy to give in a certain case, uh, which we'll get to here in a minute. <laughs> so I can't imagine which one that would uh, be. Yeah, well, we'll see. Uh, the first award that we give out, as always, is the Will Patton Award for Intensity. You want a war? I'll give you a war! He's angry. I don't want them to gain another yard. You blitz all night! And if they cross the line of scrimmage, I'm gonna take every last one of you out. You make sure they remember forever. The night they play the Titans. That's right. The man, Will Patton himself, brings intensity to every role he ever plays. And so every movie, we give out an award in his honor to say, okay, who was the person that, yeah, they realized they, when they got their paycheck, they're doing Tremors 2, Aftershocks. But who treated the movie with the kind of respect that 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 drew out of them a performance worthy of an award for intensity? Hey, right. just so you know. That uh, that line that he says in there, I used that the other night. Did you? Yeah, my wife and I were arguing. I was like, you bitch all night. <laughs> how'd that work out for yeah, you? Yeah, how'd that work? The couch is a great place to sleep. <laughs> you got a comfy couch? It's a comfy couch. It's comfy, good. Just letting you know. So this is the award we give out to the most intense actor, the one that took the role most seriously, even the fo- though they were in a dumb, worm movie. And so who, Mayor, do you want to start us off? Who yeah, is your Will up. Patton Award nominee? Yeah. To me, it was easy. Bert F. and Gummer. Yeah, Michael buddy, Gross. let's go. I think Michael Gross won last time, too, if I'm not mistaken. He did. You want a war? No. Stop. Sorry. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was on the wrong path. All right. So, yeah, Michael Gross. Good call. Easy. Easy call. Easy one. Kurt, who you got? Michael Gross. Let's yep. go. Let's go. I'm going to keep this train rolling. I got Michael Gross as yes. Burt Gummer. Absolutely Michael Gross. Yeah, well, look, when there's only six people in the entire movie. <laughs> yeah. Right. Three of it's them. Hands get, down. I'm going to go with the opener with guy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the guy that was, <laughs> was having sex with the pole. <laughs> <laughs> the worm ate the hell out of him. He yeah. right. that perfectly. I'm going to go with the worm in the open. How much did he get paid for that, I wonder? <laughs> yeah, what I'm going to need you to do is rack your nuts along this pipe. <laughs> right. Like, I'm here for one day, man. And then I need you to wear this worm suit just where only your head that, shows. That worm popped up and <laughs> strapped him in like an amusement park, right? Yeah. <laughs> I thought I saw a harness on him. Please keep your hands and head inside the worm, please. At all times. So for this table, it's a queen's queen for this table it's a clean sweep ah, but let's see what the queen. patron yeah. had to say so we got matt mulholland writing in back All again right, welcome back matt mr uh, mulholland what does he say burt gummer yes. Absolutely. not just for his enthusiastic acting but also for being the only actor to stick with every tremors movie that's yes. dedication and the yes. tv series 
Yeah. And he says eight isn't out of the question. Oh. Ooh. Here's the thing. I don't want to say we're just kind of giving it to him in a perfunctory manner. I should add, I thought he legitimately gave he a good performance did. in the he movie. Absolutely he did. definitely did. And just that rant alone. Well, and he's fun. He's believable. He's like the, the yeah. one character that has right. stayed who he should be. He's For, a legitimate yeah. good actor. Yeah. For Fred Ward, I didn't buy him for a second when he was supposed to be scared at all. No. no. And I, he was so over the top pick. in this one. Yeah, yeah. So he was better in one than in this one. Yeah, I actually was going to say something about that. Yeah, because Fred Ward, they used a, like a lot of his reactions, his like oh, like really yeah. kind of weird reaction shots from him. Not a good performance, and I liked no. him in Raymond Williams and the First Tremors, and I, I, like I lay the blame for that at at SS Wilson's feet. You get a first time director. And so, actors so much are putting their trust in the directors to yeah. make them look good. And what takes to use, when to keep shooting and not say, yep, we got it, we're good, right? Sure. Like, let the actor know what you're seeing, right. why it's not working, or know when to cut to not make your actor look like an idiot by keeping the take going too long in sure. the edit. Yep. That makes sense. And so I I don't bl- – Fred Ward didn't just forget how to act. No, he it. didn't. So I – I blame that on S.S. Wilson, not Fred. But you're right, not a great performance. It, it almost, yeah, I wasn't buying it. It almost seems like he was stage acting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He was very yeah. over the top yeah. with everything that he did, right. which was just unnecessary in the movie. But. I right. agree. So yeah. uh, Thomas Staggs wrote in. This is our first time, I think, with Thomas writing in for the awards time. Oh, hey, Thomas. Thanks, Thomas. Nice. He said Michael Gross. Yes. Nice. Here we go. I feel he will always receive any award for intensity. Burt Gummer is intensity personified. You're right. Yeah, man. Absolutely. And look at this, Jack Dean flying in with the clean sweep, seven for seven, Ooh. Michael Gross. Nice. nice. I loved his performance in this movie. Burr's character is really over the top, and Michael Gross does a great job bringing him to life. His rant when returning to the oil refinery <laughs> yes. after getting attacked is one of my favorite things out of all the Tremors movies. The movie overall just wouldn't have been as fun if Michael Gross wasn't in it. So right. clean sweep. Give it congratulations sweep. to Absolutely. Michael. Nice job. Now, I know the next one's not going to be unanimous. No, but probably not. We're not now going to give out the award called the Michael Dudikoff Trash Can Full of Dirt Award. This award we give out to whoever had the worst acting performance in the movie, the person who displayed the acting range of a trash can full of dirt. <laughs> so, <laughs> Grady. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, are, are you going with uh, Chris Garton as your pick there? Yeah. As Grady? Grady. What do you mean, man? Shady was... Grady Hoover sucks. <laughs> Shady he was so good. Grady. Good? No, he sucked balls. Can. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, he I almost also, had me. He I also went, me with, I went with Chris Garden. Yeah. He was he was absolutely <laughs> trash yeah. personified. Screw what's that funny guy. is he's had kind of a decent yeah. like, television career since then. What? He's been in a bunch of, like, not huge parts, but he's been in a, like guest spots, a lot of TV shows. If you ever saw Black Swan, he was like sexy waiter number four in Black Swan. Mm. Yeah. Nope. It's a big time part there. I don't watch movies like that. <laughs> Who you got over there, Like Mayor? what? <laughs> Black Swan, whatever like it is. Natalie Portman dancing around in a unitard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Got it. All right. Well, it's very specific. You lost, I guess. Um, <laughs> you you should see Black, Black Swan. Swan? There's a, there's I've a, actually never seen the movie. There's a fantastic scene in Black Swan. Yeah. You should see it. I went with Talk Grady. Talk about the dancing. Eh. Grady, okay. Grady. Eh. Anyway. <laughs> have you seen it? Yeah, I have. Okay, so you know what I'm talking about. Sure, we right. share the same insight on that, I'm <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about the dancing, Stephanie. Yes, it's and, beautiful. And beautiful dance. <laughs> Having been scene. a dancer, it's yeah. beautiful. So there you go. We're, we are <laughs> have the same perspective on it. You're right. You were also a dancer. Uh, I no, I was not. That's yes, how we met. You that's that's, <laughs> come on. It's all right. You let the people know. Um, all right. Who yeah, you got for the trash so can? It's not a clean sweep. I Helen Shaver. I can't. Helen Shaver. Oh, I can't stand her in this movie. All right. Awful. That's right. three to one. She's not convincing with anything she does, <laughs> yeah. and yet she's over the top. She, she was <laughs> how you do both of those definitely things. in the running as I was evaluating. How but you I do ultimately both? With Explain how. Explain, do it now. Explain yourself. <laughs> All right, let's see what the patrons had to say. Matt Mulholland came in and also said Kate Helen Shaver. Mm-hmm. Now it's three to Thank two. Thank you, Matt. Her, I agree. Her no sell of any horrific event and just wooden acting, including the inability to even produce Beastmaster tears <laughs> when <laughs> when. <laughs> I'll never forget the eye droppers. 
<laughs> when, <laughs> when <Julio. laughs> once, once Kevin Bacon was out, they out went the tear budget too. That right. just she was like, I really wanted Kevin Bacon's ass, but I got Fred Ward's instead. <laughs> <laughs> That's what, when Fred Ward did the bend over to be like, check this out. That's when she should have cried. <laughs> and she had a baby right there on the baby. table. <laughs> we don't need MREs. We just need to get a shot of I Fred Ward. I need an Ward. MRI. Good Lord. Why do I think that's Filling sexy? out them jeans. <laughs> Fred Ward's ass. I was like, I'm pregnant. <laughs> All right, so he goes, her inability to even produce Beastmaster tears when Julio was killed right in front of her really yes. sealed the deal for yeah. this award. It made his acting that much more. That's right. <laughs> chef's kiss. Thomas Staggs comes in with Helen Shaver. Oh, it's a three to three ah. right now. Three to three. We'll see what Jack Dean has to say. He said she really just seemed to phone it in, and I couldn't see her as the hot girl at all. Fred Ward gave off more sexual vibes. <laughs> Facts. Yes. <laughs> Fact. Well, I'm sure she's a nice person. She is, at best, wish.com Kate Mulgrew. So there you go. There you go. I, I think that's a fantastic description. We're Absolutely. three to three. Three to three, though. The tension built. Jack Dean is about to decide You're the tiebreaker, man. The trash Be on my side. Full of dirt award. I'm I'm on the edge of my seat like I was during this movie. <laughs> more so. I'm more excited for this than anything that happened in the movie. <laughs> Well, here it goes. Also Wait, no more. More suspense. Jack wrote in and said, Chris Garton yes! as Grady. Yes! Yes! Right. Come on, man. <laughs> Suck it, Grady. Yeah, come on. <laughs> <laughs> I know they're trying to fill the void of not having Kevin Bacon's character from the first movie, which is a big set of shoes to fill, but I really didn't like the way Chris played Grady's character. Yeah. yeah. So... That's fair. That's I didn't like him either. Has there Very ever fair. been, I know, I think the last time we talked about this was all the way back in episode two when they went from possibly having uh, Audrey Hepburn to uh, what's the the girl, the uh, Sandra Bernhardt, right? Played yeah. the bad guy. And I was like, that's got to be the worst case of whiplash ever to drop. Like, But from going from Kevin Bacon to Chris Garten is almost as bad. Like yeah. whiplash from first movie to the second movie. Like that, you're going to replace Kevin Bacon with this guy? Right. Yeah. Do you have any other ones you'd as like to share? As far as the sea, like the east is from the west, those two characters. I mean, the rock with the tooth fairy going to uh, Larry the Cable Guy. Yeah, that was pretty yeah, that was horrible. Bad drop. Too. Yeah, oh, terrible. All right, but ultimately, uh, Chris Garton's going to win. So, congratulations. You have won the only award you've probably won your entire career. <laughs> The trash can full of <laughs> And he doesn't anyway. even know it. He doesn't even know. not even going to know. Maybe he does. Somebody send this to Chris, will you? With our best wishes. Uh, <laughs> the next thing. We mean well. <laughs> we're going to do is, this is this is divorced from quality in any way. It's really just subjective. Who were the three performances, whether they were good or bad, doesn't matter. The three people you enjoyed the most in this movie. Mayor, we're going to start down there at All the right. end with you, buddy. So at three, I had the uh, Velocigraboids, the Mausers. <laughs> the Mausers. <laughs> yes. It also reminded me of the Godzilla movie with Matthew Broderick when yeah. they wanted to have the Jurassic Park Raptors, yeah, so they just yeah. had them have babies and then right. with the little ones running around. You got around. the little ones running around, yeah, yeah. yeah. Fred Ward, even, yeah, I still like him. Yeah. Uh, even though it was probably, like I said, probably on the director's end. Yeah kind of phoned it in was didn't but I, I still enjoyed his his performance and of course number one michael gross michael gross i have a feeling that all three or all four of us plus the patrons are going to have fred ward and michael gross somewhere in somewhere, the top three right. and it's just going to be a matter of who's the third person we're putting in there right <laughs> right so that's good those are good picks kurt i did number three earl okay yeah. just because i felt kind of like what Steph was talking about you know he was a little bit over the top yeah yep he was much more less believable in this one than the first one mm -hmm. um two i went with julio because that death scene dude <laughs> that was yeah, fantastic that was a good one that Thank was great you. great yep. kill number one michael gross man michael. i can't that guy I love him in every single one of these movies so far. Even four, five, and six. Yeah. He's going to be right. my number one for all of them. So just know <laughs> Write that. Write it in. Yeah. Yeah. So I also went, I went Fred Ward, number three. I mean, weak performance for him, but in this movie, he was still light years ahead of almost everybody. Nice. Right. Number two, I went with Marco Hernandez, who is Julio. Oh, you know, the nice. Kelsey. Nice. And then Michael Gross, number one. Yes. There we go. There we go. Nice. There we go. All right, Ooh. who's who's your top three, Steph? <sighs> this this wraps this, right? That's yeah, the, yeah, that's how it works. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. So he'll do this, but he won't spoon me behind a door. Right. 
then you're, you're not really friends. <laughs> <laughs> You're not friends I don't until you spoon behind the door. <laughs> Getting away from Mausers. I'm not saying we have to do it as part of your contract. I'm saying if we get attacked by monsters, you have to do you it. You have a contract? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's why I, yeah, that's why I had to take off the show for a while <laughs> for my puns. <laughs> and, now right. a, <laughs> and, and now I'm at a minimum. <laughs> All right, who's your top three, Steph? Um, so number three, I'm going to go with the... Uh, Graboid that shits a baby out of his mouth. Yeah. All right. <laughs> okay. Number two, I'm going to go That was good acting. Hell of a performance. A hell of a performance. <laughs> that baby was... That. <laughs> like a cat with a freaking hairball. Yeah. I, I almost had my own. I was like... Someone should have came over and ran having... over, picked it up, and put it on the tile. <laughs> <laughs> having witnessed so many cats puke up hairballs, it really was a good performance. <laughs> was the most confusing part of the movie. I remember going, what is happening? The most Airball. confusing, yet most convincing. Yeah. <laughs> Who's your number two? Julio. Yeah. Yes. That's yeah. Oh, look. Okay. You, you either left Michael oh. or Fred out of your top three. Who's out? Definitely didn't leave Michael out of the yeah. top three. Yeah. All right. All right. We there nice. we go. I... I like Fred Ward. I do. Just not in this. Yeah. yeah fair enough. That's I can't argue with that. I, I'm like default like if there had been literally anyone else in the movie that did okay i know you picked a graboid and that's fair um <laughs> he would have been pushed out for sure. I, yeah I, th I thought about it too but i'm like uh, he had some lines in this movie i kind of enjoyed and <laughs> needled grady so i mean to agree with stuff though that 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 like that was all a real effect yeah and it, and it was pretty gross it was yeah very i mean that, that's so kind of well why, done yeah that's why i like i mean it was a, a joke obviously right that yes. i picked the graboid but it was actually a good I, I moment, yeah. and I thought that that was pretty cool and well done. Yeah. So Absolutely. I yeah. did pick it for that reason. Yeah, so Matt Mulholland also went with a Graboid and said, Sweet. but he went with the first Graboid ever to give birth, the one that they were slapping around and running <laughs> See, into. With a I, was, was, I was debating <laughs> saying that one. I was debating it. What's up? You trying to have a baby? <laughs> it's just a, he really oh. is. He really is, Zach. Kurt, is that, what you did? is that what you did to your wife in the hospital? Hey, what's up? You trying to have a baby yeah yeah <laughs> that's what ryan what did to I, me. I thought that was right. standard that makes sense <laughs> that's probably why you had it in the hallway right he walked by i was like what's up what's hey. up girl hey. and i was just like baby? Bleh. <laughs> uh, the mouth and then you palmed it <laughs> wow uh, <laughs> look at this baby i just had hold and on you got a hairball stuff let's get you on the tile quick just <laughs> <laughs> and no shot, no shot. Matt had Fred and Michael at two and number one. Michael at number one. All right. So Thomas also went off the board with number three. He went with Wildfire the Ostrich at uh, number <laughs> okay. two. Hell of a performance by the ostrich. Hell of, uh, hell of a performance fair. playing a female ostrich. That's, right. <laughs> that's why he was a stretch for him. Uh, he also went Michael and Fred, but he flipped it. So Michael, he had it two and Fred number one. Whoa. Ooh. So I think that's the only one that didn't okay. have Michael in the number one spot. But hey, man, that's fine. if you love Fred Ward, that's well, cool, Thomas. It's all stop good, brother. listening to the show. <laughs> <laughs> This is why you're not a regular. <laughs> you just lost your spot. <laughs> Jack. Uh, you were going to be number 12. <laughs> I've always dreamt of being number 12. Thank you. <laughs> also my favorite vitamin, I might add. That's right. <laughs> Jack Dean came in with Helen Shaver in his top three. Now, he didn't give also, any. Also, stop Ooh. listening. To <laughs> he didn't yeah. give any context. Okay, so he might, as I've said, this is subjective, and it doesn't mean anything about sure. quality. Maybe he loved her because of how terrible she was. Maybe October 1974. I don't could've, know. That, that could have been, been, been it. That could have been he, it. He might That's have that October like 74 on his wall too. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. But then he also so well. he also went Fred two and Michael one. Goes uh, well with so. a Fred Ward. <laughs> nice job on there, Jack. And so. This was 1996, and, and part of what we do is, especially with movies in the 80s and 90s, is we have to ask a question like, okay, we're going to give you the final rating here in a minute. The movie has been rated in the fives, 5.9. If Arnold Schwarzenegger was in this movie, <laughs> would it push it from a 5.9 to a 6? I mean, would it, even if it was just a little better, would Arnold make Tremors to better what do you guys think if kevin bacon was in this movie it pushes it from a five nine to a six if arnold's in it it probably goes to a six three. Oh, a six three yes that's awesome dude i you think he put, put him in for grady for, 
I would have rather seen Tom Arnold, Arnold as Grady. A, make he's, Arnold a graboid? He could, he's, <laughs> Arnold drives a cab gonna, in Vegas. I'm going to eat you. Yes, hello, I'm here. I'm here to. <laughs> it would make sense with his double you. socks, like in. Uh, <laughs> Uh, same wardrobe as Grady, same <laughs> everything. Right, right. What's the uh, twins? <laughs> he wore the double because socks. I'm going to run up and so we can, slap Should we have Danny graboid. DeVito, too, instead of Fred Puny Graboid. No, Danny DeVito is the, the little graboid. <laughs> he's he's the two-legged one, is that, and it just, is, uh, his hair piece flips up. And <laughs> when the hair up. Is that what they modeled it after? That's what, yeah. <laughs> that was Danny DeVito. I, and Matt said absolutely. He goes, imagine him as Burt Gummer, dual wielding M16s on full auto, kicking the baby tremors and giving perfect one liners. How do you like this heat? Ah. <laughs> you you could, but I, I you got to have Burt Gummer and as Michael Gross. You yeah. have to. I would say I don't think he could deliver the lines like Michael Gross. Did. No, I don't think so. I think it's ridiculous to say that he couldn't do anything Michael Gross could do, but I understand that it's hard to divorce Michael that, Gross from from the Trevor. movie. Yeah, Why not just yeah, make yeah. him Fred Ward then? And have him yeah, be right. buddies. I, I think he could have just been himself. Arnold Schwarzenegger and him just <laughs> <laughs> shooting graboids. Here, here's what I'm thinking. Play, uh, hang with me for a second here, okay? Uh, when they went to the Mexican army to get supplies, yes. and, it, you know, the Mexican army would be like, we've got tanks, we've got, you know, would you like Arnold Schwarzenegger? We could, we could bring him <laughs> yes. down. And they just, we'll fly him in from Austria. We'll fly him in. <laughs> and he shows up with all the guns. And right. Sure. Hello, yes, I'm here. You've been I've been ordered by the Mexican army to help you fight these so worms. So Bert Gummer's his boss. <laughs> and they're just going around. Bert's like, check this out. They gave me these the C4, the dynamite. They just, he just flips the, he flips the, the thing. The He's in, in there, there, there in a chair. He's like, I got a C4. I got dynamite. I these got guns. Arnold. I got Arnold Schwarzenegger. I got uh, his anti-tank rounds. Hello, how are you? <laughs> Hello. Hello. <laughs> yes, I'm here. And very expensive. Who's this guy? Who's Grady? <laughs> Show what me is the he puny doing worms. here? <laughs> You're puny. He just cracked Grady's neck. <laughs> right. You're gone. But while they're fishing with the remote control cars, Arnold's just reaching into the earth and pulling worms He's like out. noodling. No, that'd be crap boy. <laughs> just puts Grady on a crane and he's using him like a fishing pole. <laughs> yes, <Okay>. now, hey. <laughs> now we are going to catch one. <laughs> Oh, run, Grady, Grady run! <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at these little legs. Look how they move. <laughs> oh, he got all oh, of them. <laughs> It's like that insurance commercial. Who awesome. almost got you? Would have been awesome. <laughs> Who almost had it? Yeah. All right. Ultimately, we got to land somewhere on this. We have uh, to make the decision, okay? Um, is it a straight-up good movie? Are the critics and the people wrong? They shouldn't be rotten. It should be highly higher rated. It's a good movie, full stop. Or is it... A bad movie with no qualifiers, right? It's not only bad, it's not enjoyable, it's not even worth watching, it's just a straight up bad movie. Or is there enough there to enjoy when you watch it that you can say, yeah, it's bad, but it rules. Bad movie that rules. Where do you guys fall on Tremors 2? Matt. Uh, Matt. Matt's a patron. <laughs> Mayor. <laughs> Mayor. Boy, this I had to think about this for a little bit, but this is... You know, your dog shits on your brown carpet. You clean it up. It's it's a bad movie that rules. There's no stain. All right. Right? There's enough here, enough kind of one-liners, enough but it smells. keeps you laughing. <laughs> it does smell. It, it takes you a little while to get the smell out of the carpet. But yeah. you can't You'll tell that it get it out. But you, yeah. <laughs> That's fair. My puns are not good for the show, but his rating is fantastic. <laughs> he created his own rating system. <laughs> I give this movie ten puns. Uh, <laughs> I think what we get this would be actually this would be the today. this would be the perfect time to let the puns fly in your final rating. Oh, I don't. Don't set me up like that. I don't have any. Oh, in the future. Yeah, ready. Oh, in the future. Yeah, sure. Yeah, hey, All right, you, go. you got it. Um, this is a bad movie that rules for me, but all just right. barely, just barely squeaks by. Okay. Because after watching all of them, two is is not bad okay. compared to four, five, and six. Gotcha. Oh, but I will say so it is necessary to set up for three. Okay. Yeah. And right. three That's I good. enjoy. All right. Fair enough. So I will say bad movie that rules. Steph? So I've been teetering on the edge of this too. Oh. I kind of base it off of would I ever watch it again? Would I ever choose to sit down and watch this movie again? Yeah. I don't think I would, <laughs> but you know what? My three-year-old really enjoyed it, so I'm going to go with bad movie that rules. Okay. All right. Nice. All right. There you go. 
<laughs> Declan liked Tremors. He did. I love that. And after we were done, he was like, the worms, mommy, go back. The worms. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, child, I am not watching this again right now. <laughs> not Luckily right now. It was not free right on now. Tubi. I did not have to pay for this good. one. So it was good. Ryan, of course, bought the DVD. <laughs> of, course of course he did. <laughs> yeah, so I would say... Yeah, what about you? How do you I'll, feel I'll, about I'm going to say it's a bad movie that rules. I think, and I, I agree, I kind of tend to think, okay, what I watched again... But sometimes even then, like I wouldn't watch it by myself. I would watch mm-hmm. if I would watch it with a group of people. Oh, and I think that means then there's yeah, enough enjoyability be. in yep. it that I think it's a bad movie that rules. So for that, I think I think there's enough fun to be had where it's worth that rating for me yep. personally. I agree. Let's see yep. what the patrons had to say. All right. Mr. Matt Mulholland comes in and says, overall, this is a bad movie that rules. All right, Matt. Nice. It's always entertaining to watch. There's a level of camp to it while it still takes itself serious, but not too serious. Sure. It's a fun movie to watch with friends and have a few beers or have out in the background for some noise. Matt, I think you nailed it, buddy. Nailed it. I would absolutely watch this with a group of friends and some beers. Uh, Thomas says, I love the Tremors movies, and while this is not the best in the series, it's not the worst Definitely a bad movie that rules All from right. Thomas right. Staggs. Thanks, Thomas. Nice. And Jack Dean comes in and says, I think this is also a bad movie that rules. All That's right. a clean, clean sweep, sweep nice. across the board. I don't think it's as good as the first movie, but I found it to be a really fun straight-to-VHS monster movie sequel. I rented this back when it first came out, knowing nothing about it before seeing the VHS cover at the local video rental store. He does make a note that they kept the teeth in. One of the jokes about the first one is they've got like canine teeth on the cover, these yeah. worms, but they don't have teeth in the freaking movie. No. And they did it again <laughs> for the second one. Yes. They put teeth on the worms on the cover again. In the False one. advertising. I know. Uh, he said, I loved all the practical effects in the movie. A lot of a lot of them still look great today. The budget for new effects benefited from being able to reuse some of the props from the first movie. A few of the CGI scenes weren't great looking, but overall I thought it looked pretty decent for a mid-90s low-budget movie. The movie has lots of great throwbacks to the original. I've rewatched it a number of times over the years, and I'll be watching it again at some point in the future. So Jack Dean, big fan. Tremors nice. 2. But acknowledges it's a bad movie, but it rules. All right, so that's pretty nice. good. Clean sweet. Yeah. Clean sweet. Yeah. We all agree on Burt Gummer, yep. and we all agree that it's a bad movie that rules. Right. Absolutely. I love it when everything comes together like this. This is fantastic. And next week, maybe it'll happen again. I don't know. We've had a last-minute change in what the movie's going to be because I didn't realize I, – I've put some new parameters into my vetting practices so that this doesn't happen again in the future. But I didn't look closely enough. We had a movie scheduled. It was supposed to be Flight of the Navigator. Yes. Yep. But that movie does not qualify. Which it's, I'm bombed about I now. know. But since Love we just movie. did Demolition Man for our April Fool's episode, which is our once a year where we do a good movie, we did Batman and then we did Demolition Man – and now we've got Napoleon Dynamite coming up because it won our Patreon poll. Oh, it did? And it that did. also technically doesn't qualify. It's on there because I hated that movie. <laughs> uh, I don't want to have basically three movies out of four that don't even fit our parameters. Right. So we had to swap it out. And so now we get to go back to 1998 for a movie called The Big Hit. Have any of you ever heard of it before? No. I've heard of it, but I haven't seen it. No. It stars a very young Marky Mark and his Funky Bunch. No. <laughs> it's a old, I don't know if the Funky Bunch is actually in it, but it's literally about him and these three guys that like pull off jobs and assassinations and heists and those types of things. I think this is what I gathered from perusing. I'll have to look. Maybe I did see there. it back in the day then. Isn't that I'll someone look. with a Mini Cooper? No. Well, that's the Italian job. Oh. Yeah, this was is the big hit. Too? He was also in that as well. Oh, so this is just a, a repeat. Very young Mark Wahlberg. I gotcha. looked at the pictures and I'm like, he looks like a baby. <laughs> this is straight out of the Calvin Klein ad era of Marky Mark. He he wasn't Mark go. Wahlberg yet. He was Marky He's Mark. Marky Mark Mark still. Funky bunch, yeah. right. That's right. So join us next week. And if you get a chance, go out beforehand and check out the big hit. In the meantime, we will be here every single Friday with new episodes. So on behalf of the mayor, Ryan Mueller, the machine punter, Palmer, the machine punter, Mummer, Kurt Mummer. I can't say that. It's too much. Just call me the the machine punter. The machine punter, Kurt Mummer. That works. And the machine punter, Kurt Mummer, and Stephanie Farrell. I'm James Hauser. Thank you for listening.
I know you're waiting for me to sing, but I got I, nothing, I really? nothing for this I'm either. Like, I'm literally, because I don't like to script it. I just do it off the top of my right. head. And as I'm sitting here, I'm like, I all know. I can think of these stupid worms crapping babies out <laughs> of their mouth. Tremors tea. <laughs> just end it in a worm. And then I'll say, uh, babies. <laughs> Gummer. Oh, what a shooting. <laughs> yeah, this worked out better than I could have imagined. <laughs> That's so hot.